have you got your video sorted today? I think so. Can you see me? Okay, no, let me, I'm, I'm not on it. Let me. Hey, oh, 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 hang on. I'm, I'm actually in the background. Yeah, yeah that's oh, better. Oh, yes, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think, yes, yes, I can see you. Yeah, excellent. Great. Yes. <clears throat> oh, wow. Oh, wow. I like the headset. Well, they're quite old, aren't they? Yeah, that's very, very good. Looks like a pilot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Glad <laughs> land on runway two yeah. zero. Yeah. I think I'm not sure you got lots of light coming in. Yeah, let me see if I can. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got this lots of lights coming in. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, let me just go and I'll close another yeah. blind as well. Yeah, I'll just, uh, yeah, that's better. Yeah, if you know, so struggling. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm struggling with. Uh, yeah, we're trying to get the light out of the, uh, the study as well. Yeah. Is it still too light? Um, let me, no, just hey, let me, I'll, I'll, close, I'll close another one. I'll close another one. Didn't make a difference. Yeah, that's, that's better. It's looking a lot better on my monitor. Okay, let me, um, Is it a different bunch of people this week? Um, yes, it's a different bunch of people, but some of the people will come back because um, they, we've got a lawyer on, on board as well. So yep. some people will come back for uh, the fact that it's a defense speaker. Uh, so what I was uh, looking at, I was doing, I think uh, just uh, this morning, I got a lot busier out than I thought I would be. I was going to send you a couple of uh, deals. I think I sent you an email not long ago. Yeah, yes. The, the, um... Talbot Grove house. Yeah, yeah, where we'll, we can look at one of those, and, uh, a few of the, the um, so I think there are one or two that we can pick up from maybe auction house, uh, network auction, and then maybe discuss them and see what yeah. the merits are. Yeah, yeah, just throw, throw uh, the postcode at me, we go and find them. Yeah, yeah, so uh, we can um, then see see that. So let, let me see, uh, yes, I think this is a, yeah, I was literally trying to look through a presentation that actually sent to me. Yeah. Okay. So I think we uh, probably should be uh, ready to, to to go. It's amazing how one does this in that last minute, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything happens last minute. Forget about. Indeed, it does. But I'm mean is that you 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 have to to do stuff. Yeah. Wow. No. No. I think now. Yes. Picture perfect now. Yes. I think the lighting is uh, studio quality now. For you are. Yeah. Okay. I think we've got. Yeah. Bye bye. 13 people locked in, so we just need to. Oh, let me see if um, uh, if Yasmin is coming, so I can make her. Um, uh, Yasmin, uh, um, Yasmin, are you there? Okay, okay, she's not on, so I can put her on the panel. Okay, let me call her. Just remind her maybe she's still in the back in the garden waiting. Yeah. So, yeah. So you've been. Uh, Busy working with all the auction companies. Yeah, yeah, very busy week. A lot of lots coming in, and they seem to be. I'm just going to shut the door. It's a bit cold in here. Oh, okay. Okay, so I can, I'm just trying to get, I'm getting Yasmin to, 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 to come in now, yeah. So we've got, what, 16, we've got 16 people in? 18 now. Um, let, let me, 16 now, let me see if anyone wants to, um, uh, to talk. Um, uh, does, hello, hi, welcome everyone to the Midas uh, um, auction event. Um, is anyone, we've got about 16 people, just to keep it going, is, does anyone want to say what they do? Put up your hand and I can um, uh, allow you to, to talk and um, uh, keep it going. Okay. Okay, yes, yeah, so, okay, I'm, uh, I 
Okay, Eshan. Okay, I'll, I'll, um, Eshan, can you just tell us who you are and what, what you do, please? Hi there, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, Eshan, yes. Yes, hi. Uh, hi, nice to meet you, Sam. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, for this webinar. Thank you very much for inviting us. Uh, my name is Eshan. I'm a software developer, but uh, as my main job, but I have also interest in the properties uh, to, to understand uh, the market more, about specifically about the auction market and uh reading to know more about this one about, uh, specifically i understand uh, it's a little bit tricky uh, than just buying the normal property uh, specifically about the time strain it has and also the goals and uh, everything uh, associated with this uh, type of purchase so very glad to be here and looking forward for the webinar oh great great um Hassan, have you bought before from auction at all and uh, no it's actually uh i haven't i haven't been uh, i mean brave enough, I would say, uh, okay. to, to get the auction market. Uh, Yasmin is a, a dear friend of mine, and uh, I have purchased uh, two properties uh, via her. And I know about the uh, normal uh, market after purchasing properties. But for the auction, uh, I'm just willing to know more and see if it's for me, then I start to look into it and uh, have some activity on it, basically. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what you've got planned for next Saturday, but I strongly recommend that you join. We, we normally have a session from 9.30 where we, we coach people on how to deal with property auctions. I would strongly recommend that you join that session next Saturday, uh, which we, we, um, uh, you, you'll get to understand a lot more about auctions, how best to position yourself and how to um, analyze properties. And then after today, uh, David will set up um, a test account for you on the EIG system, which, um, yeah, so All right, sounds by, great. By next weekend, after the coaching, you should be ready uh, to, um, uh, to, to, to deal. Where are your two properties that you have um, to, to, um, as a buy to let? Where, where are they? Uh, well, I'm, myself, my residential property is in uh, Northwood, London. And uh, one of them is in uh, Surrey, uh, in the Chelsea area. And the other is on a bushy area. It's in okay. the Where, Where's the one in Northwood? Uh, well, it's close to the station. It's at Eastbury Road. Eastbury Road, okay. We've got what am I claim to fame? I know every single street in Northwood. Oh, for, for, for about 10 years I've been jogging there every morning. So, uh, wow. East Bay, yes, that's a nice, yeah, yeah, nice yeah. street. Yeah, I, I live, I live around, is. I live around there for the last for 10 years. So, I know every single street in Northwood. Um, yeah, I mean, we have moved here quite, uh, I mean, it's less than a year we moved up here. But I love every inch of this uh, area, to be honest, especially, especially, uh, Park, Moor Park. But yeah, I lived, yeah, I lived, I lived in Moor Park for the last 10 years, actually. Uh, as soon yeah. as you drive into Moor Park, the first time on your left, I lived there for like 10 years and I just uh, moved out. So I know Northwood like the back of my hand. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a great area. Really so, yeah, it. so Asan, it's great to see you and I hope Thank I see you. you next Saturday at the um, um, uh, sure. auction workshop. And um, no like I said, and if you do see any property at auction that you need help with analyzing the deal, you can always let me know. Um, of I, 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 and of course, you're local, so you're not far from me. So we can always uh, uh, catch up sure, sure. For, uh, for, for a coffee and then find out what exactly we do. Okay, so anyone else? Um, just show of hand, please. Anyone that wants to um, have a quick, a quick shout out? Is there anyone? Okay, I've seen a few. Uh, any hands up? Okay, I'm waiting for Yasmin to, to dial in so I can make her bring her onto the panel. Um, so, so um, uh, anyway, let me see. Uh, let, let me just call Yasmin, just make sure she's not having difficulties uh, logging on. Uh, uh, Yasmin, are you are you there? Can you? Use, uh, I can't join. Can you send me invite? Oh, okay. Um, Okay, so um, let me let me just get yeah. Okay, I'm just I'm just uh, okay. Okay, so um, Ranjit, do you wanna you wanna have a quick go? Uh, Ranjit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can have a quick go while I, I try and get um, 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 uh, Yasmin to, to log on. Okay, I will do. Yeah. Oops. 
Yeah, so you can um, have them. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. Ranjit, yeah, go on. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Ranjit from Property Investor News Magazine. Uh, we've been publishing this for the last 18 years, and we're coming up to our 200th issue next couple of months. And uh, I want you to listen carefully what I've got to say, uh, <clears throat> because we are going through changing and challenging times. It's important that you listen. We are living in changing and challenging times. Change is permanent. Change or be changed, choice is yours. How you manage the changes, challenges, and opportunities really depends on you. It's your responsibility. In Chinese, the word crisis means danger slash opportunities. To some people, it means crisis equal danger. To some, crisis plus danger equals opportunities. Remember the following, after the boom, there's a recession, after recession, there's a boom, there's a boom. And fortunes are made by those who are prepared. How do you prepare yourself? Subscribe to Property Investor News, become educated investor, become knowledgeable investor, become an informed investor. In today's fast changing environment, you need to keep up to speed with what's happening in the market. Whether it's a boom or recession, or coronavirus crisis, as business owners, we should always be preparing for the unexpected times and events ahead. I thought it would help to share a share and address some thoughts on how we can or should handle this crisis yeah, yeah. situation. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I, yeah. In a time of crisis, it's useful to have a theme, mantra, word, saying, or a quote to keep no, us no, focused on what we need to be I'm doing. To do it again. A simple word that comes to mind is adapt. Just look at as a delegate. Something you we all are having, having to do. On a panel. Yeah. Okay. Adapt. A D A P T. A stands for adjust. Whatever is necessary to survive. Cut out things that are not essential. D diversify. Modify, revise, and restructure. A action. Action is the only thing. Who sit and wait will lose. P positive is the only attitude to have. Being negative will not accomplish anything. T take charge, ask for a suggestion, network, devise a plan and work on it. There is an old Marine saying, no matter what the obstacles you encounter, you improvise and you adapt and you overcome. We can accomplish anything we want if we put our mind to it. Do not let the crisis or doubt you. When you doubt your power, goes to power goes to your doubt. Remember, if you are not a subscriber to Property Investor News, you should subscribe. If you unsubscribe in panic when the world was crazy stockpiling loo rolls, you should resubscribe rethink, reorganize, regroup, restructure, and renegotiate terms. More importantly, re-energize yourself and reject any notion that you cannot regain what has been lost. Often we have, offer we have today for you is three issues of Property Investor News Magazine, which are free for you. If you subscribe today, uh, if I can get them, to, yeah. And also you get a book written by two auction experts before the hammer falls and they're auction experts, Jay Howard and Piotr Riznik. To subscribe, just follow the instructions in the chat bo box, which I'll put on later on. Going forward, information and knowledge is key to success in times of crisis especially, you need to have two tools in your property toolkit, property investor new subscription and also subscription to EIG group. Thank you for your time. Please take care, please stay home, please stay safe. 
and stay online. Back to you, Sam. Okay, thank you, uh, Ranjit. Thank you for those words of inspiration. Um, while I'm still uh, trying to get um, our other panelists to, to, to log on, um, I will, I will, I'm trying as well at the same time to get us to go live on Facebook. So we, we should be going live on Facebook very soon. Um, we, we have probably just about over 100 people subscribed to, to be on this call. But so far, I think we're getting to about 50 uh, soon. So, yeah, so, so I think, um, um, just hold on one second, let me get on with the Facebook live, then I'll come back. To, um, okay. Um, okay. Okay, David. Hello, 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 hello everybody. Person. Person will come. Will come to you. Um, I'm just trying to get um, get get her to to come on come on board then, before we uh, we we'll get that going. Yeah. Good okay. afternoon. Hi, David. Anyone else in the audience that wants to talk? Let me see if anyone's got their hands raised again. Um. Yeah, I think Yasmin is having some difficulties logging in, so I'm just trying to get uh, get her. Yeah, we did have a trial session, and I thought we, we had it nailed down, but you know how these things work. At times, last minute, uh, it's not letting her in. Okay, I think um, uh, David. Hello, hello. Okay, uh, are you? Would you be ready to to go on uh, soon? If I'm, um, if so, so I, can, I can get. If Yasmin is struggling to come on, yeah. Yeah, no problem at all. I can run okay, through um, so, sort of how the site works. Okay, so let me um, uh, just try her now, and if if she cannot get on, then I'll I will stop sharing. Then you okay. you can go on. Then I, I'll get her on before I come back. Lovely. Okay. Okay, let me see. Anyone else that wants to have a quick say? No. Okay, I'll tell you what. What, what you do, you can you can get on. Let me try and get her on. Then I'll, I'll come back. Yeah, because uh, she she logged on earlier and then she's trying to log on now and it says she can't recognize her email address. Oh, okay. Let me see if um someone's raised her hand. Let me see if if she's the one that's coming. Um, okay. Hi there. There are a few people that have been logging in Zoom. Additional information. Oh, it looks like quite a few people are having problems logging into Zoom today. Uh, hi, there are some difficulties logging into Zoom. Kept asking for additional information. Maybe explain why people haven't logged in. Maybe your team needs to resend the link to everyone to book in. Okay, someone to just sent a, a chat. Wow, this is um, uh, not experienced this before where he's asking for additional information. Um, okay, let me see. Yeah, David, you can, just, um, you can, you can kick off with that. Let me see yeah. if I can sort out these uh, technical issues. Okay, you, you can share your screen. Okay, um, share screen. And it's the screen. Share. Okay, um, are you seeing my homepage? Yes, yes. We can see Lovely, well, welcome everybody. Thank you for giving up your Saturday afternoon. I hope you, you're gonna find this worthwhile. Um, Sadly, I can't see a show of hands, but uh, if anybody's got any questions, fire them over as you uh, as they come to mind, and Sam will pass them on, and I'll deal with them maybe on the spot and make it a bit of a sort of conversational piece. Um, okay, uh, who are we? What do we do? Well, I, I, um, my history is, all my working life, I've been involved in property. After qualifying as a barrister in the early 80s, I started buying and selling houses in London, um, and auctions was a place I would both buy and sell, and it it was and still is very much a, a trading place where you buy things you want and sell things you don't want. It's uh, very straightforward. And uh, in the 80s, there was no internet, there was no fax machines, no mobile phones were just coming in. So everything was around a printed catalogue. One thing I found frustrating was there was, no, there was nowhere anybody was keeping res, uh, notes of results at uh, the results of auctions as they happened. And that frustrated me. And when I needed to find something to do after a very severe property crash in the late 80s, 
I came up with the idea of going to all the auctions, certainly in London, writing down what happened to each lot and faxing it out on the night. Um, very shortly after that, we, uh, well, about 95, we, we had a website and we started doing it all over the internet. And we now cover every, virtually every single property auction in the UK, uh, both telling people what's coming up for sale. And this is the really crucial bit. We have information on over 800,000 lots which have been offered in the past. And so we can tell you um, whether a property you're interested in uh, has been to auction before, if it has, what happened to it, and what similar things are selling for in the street. And the reason for this is, is to get an idea as to what the properties are worth. Um, if you're looking to buy a, ha a property at auction, you've probably all seen the phrase guide price. Now, when I do surveys, and I, I go around the country, uh, was up until a, a month ago, around the country or, or six weeks ago doing talks, when I'd ask the audience, what do they think the guide price is? I would say 70% of the people who answered or shouted out, got it wrong. All the guide prices is an indication as to where the reserve is currently set. It is not, and I must stress this, it is not necessarily what the auctioneer expects to sell it for. And up and down the land, even today, there'll be people going on auction sites, seeing a property with a guide price, gosh, that looks cheap. I'll spend some money doing my due diligence. I'll go and inspect it, only to find that it sells for a lot, lot more money than they were planning. In fact, I'll give you an example of this. Um, and so the site is crucial. So there's a, a um, you can see a, a property I've just searched on, on what's coming up in Redhill. And you can see this property of Auction House London, guide price £80,000 plus. Um, it's a long lease, so it's got a share of the freehold, one bedroom flat and it's vacant. And here it is. Uh, it's just down the road for me. I may well be bidding on this one. Now, it's got a guide price of £80,000 plus. Never is that going to sell for that little. It was, be, it was on the market um, end of last year at £225,000. And it's only come to the auction because the purchaser who'd been saying he was going to buy it, I'm going to buy it, I'm going, going to buy it, has pulled out. And the vendor just wants to get shot of it. And because she's got a guide price of 80000 Everybody, apparently, I was talking to the auctioneer yesterday, is looking at it. Everybody. Because they think, a lot of people think they're going to buy a flat in Redhill for 20000 when it was on the market just six months ago for 225000 Sorry, for 80000 No, I think this will be going up in the high 100s, maybe 160, 170. I see Yasmin. In. Hello, Yasmin. Good to see you. Um, so this is where the value comes in. And... Um, I'll show you another, there's another flat in Red Hill coming up for sale. And it's this property again with 160. Now that I think is going to be fairly realistic as to where it sells. The rule on guide prices is that if you quote a guide price, a single figure, the reserve cannot be more than 10% above it. ASA ruled on this. So what we're seeing here is this property, the reserve cannot be more than 176. It may be 175. And if it's a range, it has to fall within the range but it's not necessarily what the auctioneer expects to sell it for. What will tell you that is by looking at, at what's happened in the past. And if I go back here, we, sorry, let me just go into this one. We can see, uh, if I, I look at this property, I can go back to here and I can see View Street history. And this is gonna tell me what else has happened in Gatton Park Road. And what you see is 37 Gatton Park Road was offered uh, end of last month by Savills, although it was withdrawn. Um, I think the reason for that was they didn't have any interest prior to the auction. And if it didn't have anybody registered, they would probably not offer it for sale because it, remote auctions now, everybody's got to be pre-registered. There's no chance walking in. And you'll see here, it was sold in uh, a year ago, just over a year ago for 156,000. And it's the per same vendor, the person who bought it is now selling it. He's actually, or the person, I don't know whether it's a lady or a gentleman, has got a lease extension. The lease then was about 55 years left, and I believe it's now been extended to, it's slightly more than 65 actually, it's now been extended to a nine, or a, another 99 years put on it. So it's got a long lease, uh, a long lease. And again here, you can see how it was withdrawn prior to auction um, uh, back in January of 01. That was because it was a repossession, and notwithstanding they'd repossessed it a year before that, the building society hadn't got their act together to get a legal pack together. The number of properties which are withdrawn because the legal pack is not available is unbelievable. 
Um, and this is really useful information to know what the history of property is. Because if you're thinking of buying something with a guide price of uh, £80,000 plus, and I'll just go back to uh, this lot, it would be nice to know what similar things sell for. So if I look in, in street history, I can see, uh, I want to be, I'm just looking to see if there's been a flat offered recently. No, there was a, a house which sold after for, for, in fact, I know this one sold for about 330. So you're not going to be buying a one bedroom flat for 80,000 pounds. And often we see properties uh, go to auction, sell, and then come back in, in the auction room. And it's crucial, absolutely crucial, you know whether it's been to auction and what happened to it. And you can always phone an auctioneer up and say, I see the property was withdrawn. Can you tell me why? Maybe they might say legal pack wasn't there or there was a problem with it. Sam, would you like me to run, run through how the database works? I'll take that as a yes. So how, how can this help you? Well, first of all, we've got two ways of searching for a property. You could just put in a town. So um, let me just put in, uh, what's a good town, Birmingham. And uh, I can. Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry, David. I was, I was on mute. Yes, yes. Please go on. Yes. Okay. So here I'm going to do a quick search for. But well, I'll just show you. This is a quick search, or you could put a postcode in. Or if you want to get more detailed, you can drill down to a detailed search. And this is where you can really get uh, be very specific. When you're entering data here, um, say you were going to put in London Road, uh, you must put it in with the ROAD. And you see, it's got autocomplete. So London Road. And, and you also need to qualify because if you don't put something else in there, it'll find every London road in the country. So we were just looking Red Hill. So I put Red Hill in here and you can see it auto completes. Um, you can search by a radius where you put a postcode and a range. Um, or you can search by uh, inside the M25 or outside or by area. And these are all the areas. So if I wanted looking for, say, houses coming up in the northeast, I would simply do that. The other function we have is the draw map function. Um, and after the, uh, it was interesting, I think it was Hitin, a uh, lady um, sorry, emailed me and said, how can I, she wanted to search in a town, but not exactly the cent center of the town. So here we've got, here we've got Birmingham. Say you, you don't want to search in the city center, you want to search outside. Now, normally we would click a box uh, like, let me just, uh, started off, um, draw a map. I, I'm there. Yeah, so I, I, this is how it normally works. I'm sure you've all done this on right move. And you, and you get a search area and it would return the results in that. She wanted to miss out the middle and that rather perplexed me, but then I found a way of doing it. And what I did, I did this. So I'll, I'll show you. Sorry. So, so I want to say this is the area I didn't want to go and I could zoom in a lot more. And I go up very close to it and then I go out to here and just sort of ticking around the sort of outside and I'll do it roughly and I come back to here and then back to there. And so you get what would it return uh, results of any property in this area here but it wouldn't include the centre of Birmingham nor would it include down here so if, if you were to zoom in on it you could drag these a lot lot closer so I could go having done that I could go like that and I could it just mustn't touch and that's a way I could go even more in and really get these close so the chance of a property you were thinking of buying being in this area in this very narrow strip of land would be there. So I just zoom out now. And that's how you, you draw donut donut on it. So the, the, that's, that's, um, yeah. So, th so that's how you choose your address on, on these various areas, as we can see. So I've just gone back to Red Hill. If you're just looking for anything which is residential or, 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 um, you don't, you don't mind whether it's free old lease or vacant investment, tick that and I'll show you and you'll see all these immediately be populated and we've got more options. However, if you just wanted say um, none, I'm gonna put none there. I say I just wanted uh, flats um, and flats would include mansion blocks. 
Uh, that's how you would do it. And I might just want leasehold and I want them to be vacant. So this now would search for leasehold vacant flats, which includes um, any property which has got a flat element. So uh, a, a house arranged as four flats would be returned under this search, as would if you were searching on houses. And you can see, you can search on multiple occupancy, air rights, retirement flats, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're looking in the commercial world, then again, we've got the main ones, office, retail, industrial, and you can also dig down into advertising, hoardings, petrol stations, et cetera, et cetera. Where we know it's a repossession, that is also a searchable field. You might want to um, have it, you can, if you don't say you were searching on flats, you don't want anything which got a commercial element. So if it was say a, um, a, a property, which is arranged as a shop on the ground floor and two flats upstairs, and you don't want, you're not looking for that, you're not interested in anything with the commercial element, just tick that and that'll exclude anything commercial. So these are the choices you've got to really drill down and be specific about it. Uh, and, and of course, in here on the tenancy, we've got vacant, part vacant, but then you can search on ASTs or ATs, life tenancy, uh, registered rents, that's where you know the person pays a small rent set by the council and you can't ask them to leave. Coming down the date range, it defaults to all lots, but you might just be looking for, well, we've chosen flats, future flats, yeah, here. Let's go, let's go I'm gonna change this to London actually, just so we get a few more which come back. Um, So we're going to search on that. And I just want future lots. You can even specify your auctioneer. So if you remember that Clive Empson sold a house in uh, Tilbury last year, you can say, I'm looking for houses sold last year in Tilbury, and you, which are offered by Clive Empson. So you won't get them all back. You can put a price range. And this is based on the guide price. Now, remember, the guide price is only an indication where the reserve is. So if you're looking to buy something between... Um, so you want to buy something between 150 and 200,000 pounds, I would suggest you, you put a guide price quite a lot lower than that, say 80,000 pounds. And that was, as you saw with that flat in Red Hill, guide at 80, I think it's going to go for at least 160, 170. If it goes for less, hopefully it's got my name on the contract. Um, sold status, I'll come into this, but here again is handy. Great place to find deals would be unsold lots. In fact, why don't I do that? So if we think about it, if a property has been offered auction and doesn't sell, I would say the vendor's kind of in the last chance saloon. He didn't sell it in the private treaty. He didn't sell it prior to auction. Nobody bought it in the room. And really it's, it's uh, you know, damaged goods almost. The, the, um, the auctioneer uh, didn't sell it. And so people are gonna say, well, it's gotta be for less money. So what I'm actually gonna change this. I'm gonna search for uh, on this to show Properties which have been offered, say, since uh, 1st of uh, February um, uh, at auction, so last seven weeks, which are in London, they're vacant fl leasehold flats, and they're unsold, yeah? And now I'm just going to go and press search. So, it's, so, so there's 73 properties offered in London in the last seven weeks, which didn't sell. Now, I bet there's some deals in here for people. Generally, the auctioneer has only got a right to sell it for, um, is only under contract to sell it for about four weeks after the end of the auction. But I'm sure if you went, phoned up Barnum Markers and said, um, I see Barclay Tower, didn't, 61 Barclay Tower didn't sell in your, in your February auction, I'm happy to give you 625, they'd be straight on to the vendor to say, I've got an offer of 625, do you want to take it? Yeah, and all of these are deals. So have a look down here. Uh, I, I haven't looked at it in many of these. Uh, and when you come into one, I'm just going to pick this one. No, all right, I won't actually pick that one. Uh, we've got lots of them. So let's take this one, for example. This is a property. Uh, and I'm just going to see what's happened in the street before. So I click on this button here, view street history. And sometimes, well, here we can see, oh, that's in 2010, so it wouldn't be relevant for pricing. But what I can do, 
I'll, I'll come on to this later. So unsold prop, unsold lots are really popular at auction. And quite a few of my clients have what we've got an auction dealer just telling them about the properties which remain unsold after the auction. So we, we, we go back to future lots in London. Um, and I'm going to run a search. So these are flats now. There's 46 flats uh, coming up for auction in London. And, and here they all are. Um, sometimes we just wait, uh, purple bricks, we, we act for purple bricks for the online auction. Romans, now that's interesting. This is a kind of deal you can get. Romans are an auction house based in um, Reading or just outside Reading, going further west. And yet they're selling a house and they're a sort of provincial auction. They're selling a flat in Stratford. How many people in Stratford have heard of Romans? Very few, I would think. And so there's not going to be many people like, on, on the Romans catalogue mailing list who um, will, will uh, live in East London where they might want to buy. And yet this is here. So guided at 270, let's have a quick look and see. This is a typical lot. Um, what we have, we've got additional information. We've got the catalogue entry. And this is as it, appeared in, it appears in their catalogue. We can view it on a map, see where it is. Let's see where it is. And of course, we use Google Maps, so you can use uh, Street View to go and see what it looks like. Um, I don't know whether there's been anything in the street. Uh, well, this is a uh, in the same postcode. Actually, this is the um, same street. Um, flat. A this is a 32nd floor flat. So this is a new build. Um, two bedroom, 841 square foot, quite large. Uh, sold for 380. This is a second floor flat, two bedrooms, so same number of bedrooms, and we could have a, a look at the details. And this is guided at 270. So the, the, guide, the reserve on this will be less than 300,000 pounds. And we can see that a, a new build flat here in the same road sold for uh, 380,000. So there could be a, a bit of margin there. And I'm just looking to see what else has happened down here. And we've got examples. Um, this is a good example. The property was offered by auction house, was withdrawn prior to auction, and then came back in and maybe, uh, uh, yeah, this, uh, this was ground rents actually. So this was, wouldn't be as more of an investment type property. And going down, we can see lots of other properties have been in, in, in the street. So that's really handy information to have to start getting comparable. So we, we got a comparable, you know, year and a half ago, um, no, just, 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 just over really a year and a half ago, of a two bedroom flat selling for 380. So that tell you, gives you, starts to give you an indication where the auction value is. We can look for similar properties and this will look for other flats which have been sold in the E15 postcode. And we can see Strat didn't sell, uh, sold for 188. That's a two bedroom just around the corner from Savills. Again, all good market data to see what types of prices things are selling for. Again, we can see a flat, same flat being offered twice, unsold at both. Could be a deal there. Who knows? And see how the reserve came down. So the reserve in, in uh, May last year, it was 390. It dropped 30 grand, almost 10% drop in reserve. Two months later, still didn't get it away. Um, and that was the property we were looking at uh, just earlier. And these are all the flats. So... There's been uh, 275 flats go to auction in, in, uh, in E15 since we started keeping records. What else we got? Legal documentation. Yasmin's going to be talk. This is interesting. Uh, this runs on our auction passport service. I'm sure lots of you have used that. There's no documents. They put it to auction. And I can't, when, when is the auction? But there's no documents. It staggers me how late some vendors leave it, the auction, to be fair, the catalogue's just come out, uh, has, hasn't, um, how late some people put the legal documents up. The, both those two flats in Redhill I was talking, uh, showing you earlier, uh, the, the flat, which is guided 80, that's been, there's been con contract papers out for the last six months, and yet the legal documents only went live yesterday, which is two weeks before the auction. The vendor solicitor has had all the documentation you need up until that time, the other flat, the one which was uh, was sold, is is up for one one sixty. I think the the one which I was looking at um, 
in Gatton Bottom, which which had been to auction a couple of times before, were drawn by Savills. Again, the legal the guys bought the property. He's selling it a year later, and the legal documents have only been available for a few days, and the auction's next week. Why he would have seen had the entire legal pack from when he bought it. Why people leave it so late, I don't know, because you've got to do your due diligence on the property. What else? Um, property prices. This takes us out to the equivalent of, of land registry. If you go to Right Move, you can you can search on property prices. We've got them all here. Now, bear in mind that at um, auction, um, only about fifty percent of the land registry prices of, of the auction sales get reported by land registry. Don't ask me why. I was told once it's because they don't think auction sells for value. So finding out what things might sell for in historic information auctions, the uh, the right move and Zoopla house price data, of which we have as well, is of very, very limited value. Four reasons. Firstly, they only report about half the sales. Secondly, they don't tell you whether it's auction or private treaty. Big difference in the market. So you don't know. You won't know whether when you come and look at it, you don't know whether any of these properties are land rich, were sold at auction or private treaty. And bear in mind that only 2% of all residential transactions go through auction. Thirdly, it can take three or four months to come to, to, to get registered, if indeed it is. And so if you're wanting to know whether a property's been offered before, looking land registry, A, it won't tell you whether there's auction, and B, if it's been offered in the previous month and sold, it wouldn't be there anyway, even if it was going to be reported, because it takes three or four months. And finally, and crucially, they don't tell you when a property doesn't sell. This is only sold data. And if you're looking at a property, I think you would want to know, has it been to auction and unsold before? And we've seen lots of properties coming back to coming, been offered for auction where they were offered two months before and not sold. Uh, you can add it to a short list. Uh, so a bit like sort of a shopping cart, managed portfolio. So I, I, I might could set up a portfolio for flats coming up in Red Hill. So I could pop them all into there. And as they change, I get notified and I can always go and see them easily and write notes against them. The auction details tells you um, uh, where it is, etc. It is actually online on our platform. Uh, we've got various calculators, calculating stamp duty, yields, etc. Contact the auctioneer. Trend analysis. This really is of limited use, but it just shows you the average prices um, of, of flats in this area, E15. And actually, it's quite interesting here. You can see a 92, the average price was, was 26,000. It peaked in 08. Here we had Lehman Brothers. And look how it dropped down. Look at the drop in value of flats selling at auction. And it went back up 2016 down. But you need to have a reasonable sample set here. And as and you see 2020, there's only been one. So these, these average prices in 2016, 17, you know, 10, 15 sample set. There's only flats, there's only one. So it's probably down because they may be small flats. But again, it just it it all gives you a bit of colour on the property. And what other tools do we have? Well, well coming down there, nobody's really into commercial property, are they, Sam? Uh, no, there, there are quite a few people that are into commercial properties. Okay, well, yeah, so here, you've got five more minutes and cover that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll cover that. Here you can search on commercial property, and say you were looking at a property. Um, let me just go up to here. I just I just uh, clear this. I'm going to search on commercial. So I've selected everything. Say you were thinking of buying a, a, a commercial property like a, a Barclays Bank and you're buying it really for the income stream and you want to know what sort of yield you might expect. Well, uh, I, 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 I'm down here in the bottom. So just here, I'm going to put uh, the tenant where I'm looking for a tenant where it starts with Barclays. So if you use a wild card, it means if the tenant's name starts with Barclays, it'll come back. And I'm just going to hit search. So, oops, sorry, uh, uh, let me see what I've done. I had a, yeah, I still had something in the in the town, county area. Yeah, let me just uh, take that out. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to search the entire country for uh, um, yeah. Okay, I'll make sure I haven't got anything else. Oh, sorry, I'm just done something wrong. You'd think I'd know how to use this after 30, 30 years, wouldn't you? Let me put. Where's back PLC? 
I'm doing something wrong here. But it would return um, all the property, and you can compare the yields yields on them. Um, the other function, key function, is we have uh, what we call auction alerts, and these are set up by going to uh, let me see my EIG. I haven't set an auction alert for so long. Um, crikey, I've forgotten how to set up auction alerts. All right, here we go. There's, there's a button. So supposing I, I'm going to set up a new alert, I'm going to call it um, so flats in London unsold. So here we go. That's the name. I'm going to put London in here. And I'm going to say leasehold vacant flats. And I'm going to uh, down here say I want unsold only. So what this will do is this will notify me every time a flat goes to auction, goes through the room, but is unsold. And this will come out, you know, couple of hours after every auction and if that's what I want to buy I want to buy the orphans the ones we didn't sell prior to auction or in the room and we have a, a lot of our clients to have this and they are on the phone as soon as they get the email to say well yes I see you got it available at 350 it's only worth 300 to me do you want to do a deal and a vendor certainly in today's market is keen to have any or any any offer so really useful feature searching for unsold lots um, our database is unique there's no other database like this in the country and the ability to see what things are sold for is absolutely crucial. If a friend of you offered a flat around the corner from where you live, or in an area you don't know, and you said, look, it's a really cheap flat, you can have it for 200 grand. The first thing I reckon you guys would do is jump on to right move to see what flats in that street and, and area are selling for. I think we'd all do that. Auctions, the only right move equivalent of auctions is us to see what has happened in the past and also what's coming up in the future. So. Just finishing off here, um, if anybody would like to have a trial, very happy to give you all a, a week's trial, but crucially it will be guided. Somebody will take you around as well. Simply send me an email to info at eigroup.co.uk and then just include your name uh, and telephone number. We'll set a trial up and somebody will call to take you around and make sure you get that. that. So a week's trial, yeah, send me an email, info at EI Group, that's letter E, letter I group, dot co, dot UK. And uh, thank you. Okay, thank you, David. Or oh, they can indicate to RT after this event. Um, RT would get all the email addresses sent through to uh, to David. Yeah, thank you, David. Um, thank you. I, uh, uh, again, uh, if you can just stop sharing uh, your sure. screen. So I don't have to stop you. Yes. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, we, we, we all, we understand Zoom has got um uh you know suddenly quite a few thousand worth uh, percentage increase in our business in the last couple of weeks and i'm, I'm guessing we all know why uh, zoom business has gone so uh, massive in the last couple of uh, weeks so zoom is actually having a, quite a few challenges um we've got more than 100 people booked in to this uh, seminar so far we've only got 50 in but quite a few people are struggling to get in but I think our most important person that was having difficulties, as Yasmin, is now back, is now on. Um, just before, um, uh, can, can you see? Are you seeing my screen now? I, I, can you see my screen, uh, David? Am I sharing? Yes, you are sharing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That, that's fine. Yeah. Just want to make sure that it's not just me seeing this. Um, okay. So I think um, uh, Yasmin. Uh, Yasmin, I'm just trying to make sure Yasmin is still on with us. Oh, she was on the panel a while ago. Um, uh, uh, Yasmin, let me let me just try and sort it out because I was going to get her to to come on now. On uh, she dropped off. Okay. Um, and she's I'm trying to on the screen yeah yes me can you just un unmute yourself please 
I, I just can't see her. Yeah, she was on the on the panel not long ago. I don't know if she drops up. Yeah, uh, she's moving. Connection. I think. Yes, yeah, she she's unmuted her mic, but uh, yeah. and I, I saw the lips move, but no sound. So maybe the mic's not. Uh, yeah, she is unmuted. Configuration. Um, I think she's probably having some difficult. Let me phone her now and see if she has any uh, internet difficulties or something. Guys. Hello, hi, Yasmin. Hey, I, I, are you on? C can you talk? We can't hear you. I can try and talk again. Let's see. Okay. okay. I bet we're not seeing you. Can you switch on your camera? Hello. She can actually hear us, but we're not hearing her. So, and she's not mute. Uh, so I don't know what is happening uh, on our end. But okay, um, while while, would she, while she's trying to uh, to get herself on, uh, because she says she can hear everyone. And um, uh, Yasmin, can you switch on your camera? We can't see you anymore. Okay, so we uh, we seem to be having some uh, technical problems getting her back on. So um, while she's trying to to get in, um, I will just uh, uh, continue. Just um, I'm answering a couple of questions. If anybody's got any yeah. qu questions, I'm happy to uh, you know, if you yeah. answer questions. People fire questions into me, and I'll um, answer them live. Uh, okay. and, Hidden is just asked, can we search within a mile of a train station? Yes, and simply do that by um, d using, using the draw map function that I showed earlier where we did a donut round, um, uh, bright, uh, round Birmingham. Uh, in order to ask, uh, could we search by class use? Not at present. We are looking into this, but we have sort of polling our, our members. We find most prefer, would prefer to uh, search on your know, flat house shop Upper, etc. Although there is work afoot to bring this online, and that should be uh, hopefully yeah, think, later this year. Yeah, but Okay. No, I can hear you here, but I can't hear you on the system. Hi, David. Can you hear yep. Yasmin? I can't hear Yasmin, no. No, no. Yasmin, I can hear you on my phone calling you, but I can't hear you on the system. Um, do, you want, do you want to sign out and then sign back in? Let's see if that makes a difference on your end. Yeah, j just sign out and then, and then sign back in. Okay. So, okay. Okay, I think we're having, um, Yasmin can hear all of us, but we, we just can't hear her at all. So while we're waiting for Yasmin to try and sign in, uh, our next, our upcoming event will be uh, on Property Question Time on the 6th of May. Uh, my apologies, uh, Bimpe uh, cannot make it actually. Uh, I think um, I, I didn't pass a message to, to Ati not to put her on the panel. However, it's always good to have her first grace our, uh, um, our poster, albeit that she can't make it. Um, let me see if I'm, yeah, yeah. So, um, um, yes. So, so, so on the 6th of April, just, um, on, on, of May, sorry, before the, um, start of the auction house auction, we have our property question time as usual from 10 o'clock to 12. That will be, um, um, an online zoom event, like the one we had last time. Uh, if you remember the first event that we had was my first zoom event with um um which we had with Simon Zuchi and we had over 500 locked in uh, it, it, it was uh, a great uh, occasion to introduce one to technology uh, our next event uh, we think there's a lot of negativity around the whole uh, current situation so uh, especially with finance so what we've done we put together a panel 
uh, they, um, we've got a lawyer, uh, one of Yasmin's colleague, he would come in and he will be talking about how best to structure a JV contract between you and an investor because we strongly believe that one of the ways around the current uh, funding situation where banks are giving you a lower loan to value is to get third party uh, finance, JV finance. So we will have Vanish. Vanish Patel will be there to tell you how to warm up and make yourself more trustworthy. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, hello? Yes, I think so. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, you're back. You're back on now. I'm back again. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> then, okay. Just, um, just hold on. Let me, um, I, I would, um, I, I would, um, I'll, let me let me get on there now. I'll, I'll get you on now. Are you ready to, to come on now to present? I am, yes. I'm ready here. If you are ready, yeah? Okay, what I'm going to do is um, I'll stop my presentation and then you can go You can go ahead and then I'll, I'll do my presentation at the end. Yeah? That's fine. Think so. Since we have you now, we don't want to risk anything again happening with the uh, internet. So I'm going to stop my presentation and then get you to come on and speak. Yeah? And then That's just fine. before you come on, like I was saying, earlier before Yasmin actually goes on uh, is that we at Midas we're trying to look as pos to, to present a very positive and get everyone to be as positive as possible so we are looking at getting the panel that we'll have on the 6th of May will be one that will be uh, um, educating you on how best to source finance out of the financial system how you can get JV partners uh, so we'll have a lawyer uh, first Vanish will tell you how to uh, get um, uh, JV partners, how best to uh, network and look for, for the partners to get to, to, in the first place. And then we would have um, a lawyer, one of Yasmin's uh, colleagues, would tell you how best to structure the contracts. What kind of contract do you need to secure a second charge, or is it best to have a different uh, secure against a third party uh, uh, property? So all that he would go through the various types of uh, joint venture uh, security you can offer your, uh, uh, your, your investors. And then uh, uh, Bimpe, who cannot make it, I'm going to find a replacement. We're looking for an office, a family office manager. So if anyone is on this uh, uh, um, um, Zoom, if you are a manager of an office, uh, an office, a family office manager, please let me know. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a family office is, um, most families that have a bit more money um, than, than the average, uh, especially when parents worry about their legacy, their legacy, they don't want to leave money in case their kids spend a lot more than they did and uh, destroy their legacy. What they do, they, they, secure, they ring fence their money into a fund and then get an office, a family office to manage it. One of the requirements of a, of a family office is that there will be members on the board that are not family members, that are just professionals to keep that family legacy going. Some, they might have some rules that we've got maybe 20 million in the family, in that fund. It can only be spent on in property or they might have some guidelines. But what we're saying is that now is the time for people to look at how they can raise money from alternative uh, sources like family offices. Um, uh, so yeah, so our property question time. I've got, if you can look just before uh, I'm, um, I hand over to you, if you look in my background, I've got a background of a panel, uh, one of the panels that we had with a live audience and uh, Dr. Suma with a yellow tower right behind my back is one of our very dear uh, clients, a uh, customer and a uh, mentor, a friend, uh, everything, a big brother, but he's been very um, uh, unwell with the COVID um, situation, but he has made it through, he's back home now. So we um, just pay him a tribute that he's um, uh, all uh, there and well. So please bear him more in your prayers. And we thank those of you who know him. He's, he's spoken at quite a few of our events, so most people know him and that he's, uh, he's waxing strong again. Um, so thanks, um, Yasmin. Yes. Um, uh, to get you one of the, um, uh, what we always say, we, we bring, we're bring bringing David here for the last two, three weeks now. And David has been coming out telling us how best and where we can find auction properties. Uh, I've, I've been, um, for the last couple of weeks, 
every Saturday, I have a session of people all day telling them how to look at properties, where, how to look at the best deal, how to negotiate, uh, get the best um, uh, deal relationship with auctioneers, uh, do a DD in terms of making sure that the deal stacks up. But the missing piece in the jigsaw is the legals. And like I always say, you need to understand what is in there before you actually commit to, to buying. There are a few things I will say about legals, but I'm not going to go through them now because we've got an expert. Uh, one of our partners, a, a well-trusted lawyer, she sits on most of our panels at Property Auction House, um, um, will take us through in the next sort of uh, tweet. How long do you want to talk before the Q&A? Uh, Yasmin? Oh, sorry. sorry. I'm yeah, not going to 20 minutes. Uh, oh, 20, okay, yeah. So, yeah, you feel free. So, you talk for 20 yeah. minutes, and then after 20 minutes, they will go for to a Q&A between you and David. You can then take questions. So, um, over to you. Do you need to share a screen or, or you? Um, no, I'm, I'm just going to go through the legal pack uh, you presentation. Talk. Okay, okay, that, that's fine then. Okay, that's good. Over to you, uh, Yasmin. You can introduce Thank yourself, you. where, who you are, where you work. I think you can do a better job than myself. Thank you. Thanks. Hello, everybody. My name is Yasmin Asad. I'm one of the real estate solicitors working at Ronald Fletcher Baker Solicitor. Uh, we have different offices in London. I'm based uh, on uh, the Western City uh, office, uh, Baker Street. Uh, I will give you my details if you want to contact me after this uh, session uh, for any kind of question in relation to the legal pack and property purchases in auction. You are more than welcome to come back to me. Um, I'll, I'll give my details at the end of my um, you know, presentation in relation to legal pack. We have decided with some that uh, because of the very important of the uh, documents which is included in the legal pack is a good session for everybody who's interested to buy properties in auction to have a kind of a review or um, opinion in relation to the legal pack. I will summarize some main points of the documents and why you should look at the legal pack before you bid on the property in auction. We all know that uh, properties end up in auction for different reasons. Sometimes the seller wants uh, to have some you know, ca quick cash because uh, selling in auction is a perfect way, is the quickest way to sell your property, exchange contracts on the day of auction and you know, get, your, get your money within, within 28 days. Um, there are different legal packs. Uh, well, let me just explain what is the legal pack. Legal pack is a document which the seller solicitors will include in the um, legal uh, legal pack at auction. Usually you have to look at official copy of the register. Official copy of the register shows you who's the owner of the property, how long the owner has, um, you know, has that property. If it was less than six months, if it was, if it was more than six months, it's very important. There is always a reason. If it's a less than six months, the, the owner, the seller was the owner of the property and he wants to sell the property again in auction, there is a reason. You have to look into it especially if the price is, is, in your opinion, is a good price, is a low price. The land registry and local searches, these documents usually give you um, details of the you know, flood search, local authority search, water drainage search result, and they are quite important sometimes to know what is the you know, um, result of these documents in relation to the property you want to bid in an auction. Other important aspects in the legal pack is a contract and special conditions. Why special conditions are, impor are important? Because seller solicitors can change the uh, general conditions of the contract and put it as special conditions and they can set out any terms that they want. One of the things that they usually can change is a completion date. You buy the property in auction, if you are not a cash buyer, if you are depend on the you know, loan or mortgage money, you need to know what is the completion date for this property. Sometimes if they don't, if it's a silent, if the contract is, a, if, it, if it's special conditions are silence in relation to the contract and a special condition, then you have 28 days, 20 working days, which is 28 days to complete the transaction. But in most cases, there are sometimes seven days, sometimes five days, sometimes 14 days. So it's really important to look at the legal pack and special conditions. The other property, the documents that, it in, that includes in the legal pack are property information forms, gives you information in relation to the property, any disputes that the owner of the property has with the neighbors, boundaries, 
fixture and fitting forms. Don't wait for everybody. This includes what information and what kind of furniture or the, uh, you know other um, assets are included in the property when you are buying the property. Management information. If the property is a leasehold property, there is a management information pack in should be in the legal pack, which gives you additional information in relation to the leasehold property. Management pack usually gives you information in relation to the ground rent, in relation to the ground rent review. Sometimes in some leases, the the, the ground rent reviews every twenty day, twenty years, fifteen years. And you need to know how much is the ground rent because in some leases, the ground rent are like thousand pounds and starts from thousand pounds and in every 10 years is gonna you know, uh, increase as well. This is really, really important because ground rent is very important for, um, for, pro for a leasehold properties. We will talk about the ground rent and you know, the importance of them in a, in a later, um, later date. Other important documents are lease and lease plans. Some properties end up in auction, they don't have lease plans. Why there is no lease plans, no one knows. And if there is no lease plan, how do you know the concept of the property? How do you know the layout of the property? Tenancy agreements, uh, this is usually for buy to let properties. If you are um, bidding on a property at auction, which is tenanted, there must be tenancy documents in the legal pack, there must be other documents which, is, which has been served on the tenant at the time of the tenancy in the legal pack. Planning permissions and other documents that is usually going to be in the legal pack. One important information in here is, okay, I've already um, laid out of the documents which you have to see in the legal pack or which you expect to see in the legal pack. But don't forget, this is not just these, these documents are very important, but these are not the, uh, you know, exhaustive documents. There are some documents, it depends on the property and conditions of the property, which are not going to be included in the legal pack. And you as a person who's going to bid on the property, you think, okay, I don't need a solicitor, I'll look at the legal pack myself. I've seen these circumstances and these situations a lot, that's why, that's why I'm explaining that. I've looked at the legal pack, everything is in there. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm happy with the legal pack. I'm going to bid on the property. I'm not going to spend any, you know, any money with the solicitors to look at the legal pack for me. But one thing that people miss is there are documents that it must be in the legal pack and it's missing in the legal pack. And those documents are important. And that's why you have to do the, your due diligence and get your solicitors to review the legal pack before you bid on the property any property in the legal uh, in the in the auction okay there are at least three type of legal packs you have to expect in the auction the first uh, the first legal pack uh, the legal pack is a residential when when there is a residential uh, property when you want to buy that property to live in yourself that's one aspect the other properties that you would um, expect in the pro in the auction is a buy to let properties, BLT properties that you don't want to leave in the property. You just want to buy as an investment is a BLT property. For these BLT properties, you have to see if the property is empty or if the property is tenanted. Because if it's empty, then you would expect different kind of legal documents in the legal pack. If the property is tenanted, you have to be really, really uh, careful and check all the tenancy documents in the legal pack. Everything must be there. All the documents which has been served on the tenant at the time of the tenancy, it must be included in the legal pack. Otherwise, you're gonna stuck with that tenant. He might be paying rent for some time, but if you need the property and you need to you know, serve section 20 on the tenant, if the documents hasn't been served on the tenant at the beginning of the tenancy, you're gonna stuck with that tenant and it's, you have to go through the courts and courts orders to get the tenant to vacate the property and it can be costly for you. The other, uh, the other type of uh, legal pack which um, you need to be aware of, it's a plot of lands. There are, in recent auctions, there are a lot of plots of lands for sale in an auction. It, uh, the, the, the prices are varies from like 1,000 pounds to 100,000 pounds. And some people, I have some clients that uh, they come to me after they exchange contracts um, in an auction for a plot of lands, like 5,000, 7,000 pounds. If you are buying any, property, any plot of lands in the property, uh, sorry, in the auction, with the view of 
I'm going to redevelop this, prop, uh, this plot of land later on, next year, 20 years, five years, next time. Get your solicitor to look at the legal, legal pack for you because it's just the price 7,000 pounds or 5,000 pounds which you can afford and you think that in the future you can develop the, the, the land is not sufficient. There are three different things that you have to look in the, in the legal pack for a plot of lands. One of them is overage. There is a clause called, called overage and you can usually find this uh, clause in the, in the transfer documents in the legal pack. What does overage mean? Overage is a payment which is, um, which is, a, which is an extra payment for the seller. The seller can, um, can be liable to get paid again upon completion after you, let's say, let's say plot of land for 7,000 pounds. You already paid 7,000 pounds upon completion. You already completed the transaction. But just be careful because if the overage is in the, uh, is in the uh, one of the transfers in the legal pack, which that, what does that mean? That means that the seller can be liable and you are expected to pay the seller if you are either sell the property again or if you are, uh, let's say, obtain or uh, you, you get the planning permission to develop the property again. There are two overage minimum. There are two minimum overages in the plot of land uh, legal pack documents. Sale overage or planning permission overage. Both of them are costly and the seller can put the special conditions in the contract for you if you obtain the planning permission or if you obtain if you want to sell the property again or that plot, plot of land again you have to pay percentage like 50 percent 30 percent of the sale price to the seller again so this is quite important aspects the second one is a restrictive covenant restricted co covenants are a series of um acts that you should not do or you should do and you have to pay for it if for example you are buying a plot of land for X amount of money, and you think in the later date, in five years, 10 years, two years time, I'm gonna develop the property. But if there is a restrictive covenant registered on the title to say that you are not permitted to build any houses in the property, then that, that's it, you stuck with it. You can't remove the restrictive covenant, you can't build any property on that, okay? The only aspects, the only option for you is either to, either to retain that land forever, or just put it back in auction for sale, okay? There are also sometimes in some documents, in some circumstances, there are agreement to release the restrictive covenants. What does that mean? It means that there is an agreement document in the legal pack for the release of those restrictive covenants. Those restrictive, restrictive covenants usually refers to you can't develop the property or you you can develop the property but you can't build just one house you have to build like 200 flats in there if you and then you have to pay for this uh, agreement you have to pay some amount of some percentage of the asking price to the seller again to release to release those, those restrictive covenants from the property for you so just be careful if you are buying a plot of land look into this at least three different um documents overage restrictive covenants any agreement to release the restrictive covenants okay uh, these are usually for the plot of lands that they have a potentiality of uh, for the, for them to increase the price if for example there is a plot of lands for 80000 pounds or 20000 pounds but if you can go to the local authority and get all the planning permissions and all the you know um, all the you know um, the permissions from and authorities and everybody else, then those, if you bought that, that plot of land for 20,000 pounds, after you have planning permission, that plot of land would usually worth, let's say 400,000 pounds. In that case, if there is overage on, the plot, on that plot of land, you have to pay percentage of the sale or the value of the land to the seller, which is quite important. So you need to bear that in mind. You always need to do your due diligence in relation to the legal pack. What does that mean? You have to view the property. All the auctioneer, no matter which auction you are buying the property or you want to bid on the property, they allow you to go to the property and see the property. So you must be satisfied with the physical state of the property. Don't only look at the pictures on the you know, auction catalog. If you can, go and look at the property, go around the property, just make sure there is no 
um, overuse conditions on the property. There is no um, kind of, the, the property might be a half burned down. So you might not be able to see inside the property, but at least you know what you are bidding for. Okay. And the other, the other important aspects of um, legal pack and special conditions are that recently seller solicitors are incorporating a lot of uh, cost sellers cost in the legal in the special conditions so if you are buying a property for for let's say 400,000 pounds don't be surprised if no one's look at your legal pack don't be surprised that upon completion you have to pay like 500 I'm sorry 410,000 pounds additional 10,000 pounds why because seller can ask you to con contribute to his legal uh, legal solicitors fee his disbursement searches and maybe even uh, auction commission you have to pay as a buyer you have to pay your auction commission to the auction house but sometimes the seller can put it as a special conditions that you also have to pay or reimburse the seller for his uh, incurred cost with the auction which which sometimes can be costly one of the advantage or some of the advantage of uh, getting your solicitors to do the due diligence for you and look at the legal pack for you is that for example if the special condition says that for example the seller uh, is charging you or is asking you upon completion to contribute to his legal cost commission cost auction you know uh, expenses and everything else in advance of the auction, if you are really interested in that property, we can in get in touch with the seller solicitors and we can ask them, for example, okay, my client is interested in that property. We are happy to pay this cost, that cost, but we are not happy to pay, for example, he's not happy to pay, for example, for a, a seller's uh, auction commission. It had, it had uh, happened in the past for my clients that sometimes um, I had clients, they came to me, I reviewed the legal pack for them, and we get in touch with the seller solicitors and said in advance of the auction we would like to you know make a bid on this property but just to it, just to let you know can be uh, negotiated on the uh, auction sellers auction, auction commission which was around five thousand pounds and they accepted they accepted we exchange contracts before auction and we get rid of that sellers auction uh, costs so if this if, if my client wouldn't come to me and we wouldn't look at the legal pack for him. He would have gone to the auction house. He would have exchanged contracts on the auction date, and he would have been bound by all the special conditions, including that seller's cost, seller's additional cost. So there are some benefits of getting your solicitors in advance to review the legal pack for you and do the due diligence in advance of the you know auction auction date for you. Um, Sometimes it's not just about the cost. Sometimes it's about the legal aspects. Sometimes uh, legal aspects of the property. There is a, there is some properties they have a legal, uh, really really legally. Uh, they are not uh, there are not enough documents in the legal pack. So we can ask the other side for uploading more documents. We had in the past that even two three days before auction, special conditions wasn't you know uploaded in the legal pack. And some people they 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 look at the legal pack uh, themselves. There is no special conditions. They look at the pro pictures of the property. They lock the property. They don't look at the legal pack again. And the seller solicitors upload the special conditions maybe one day, 24 hours before auction in the legal pack. And you're gonna buy, you're gonna bid on the prop on that property based on the documents you saw three days ago. And you exchange contracts on that property, and you just came up with the special conditions. A lot of different conditions on the sale. Completion date sometimes is time. Sometimes for completion days, time is of an essence. What does that mean? It means that you have to complete on the specific date that the seller is asking you. Let's say you exchange contracts on the 1st of April. The completion is 17 of April. In a usual, in a normal situation, sometimes you can get in touch with the seller solicitors and ask them for extension and it's up to them. If they can if they agree to extension of time or not but sometimes if the contract says time is of an essence it means if you complete on the 17th of may 17th of april that's it you completed the property is yours if you can't complete then that's it you lose your deposit and the seller is not going to agree any extension any extension of time for your completion so in every aspect if you are looking at it it's worthwhile 
to get your solicitor to do the due, the, due I'm sorry to do the due diligence and look at the legal pack and review the legal pack and give you a report on title before you bid on the property i'm happy to answer any questions if you have um, i think i have covered the most important um, documents in the legal pack and uh, uh, the importance of having a legal pack reviewed by your solicitors i'm happy to answer any questions after this session okay uh, yasman uh, thank you very much for those uh, um, tips on um, on our auction packs um, the legal packs of course um, um, we've been having some technical difficulties actually getting uh, um, uh, Yasman some um, uh, presentation on on the visuals but what will happen is that next week when she comes on uh, she will have a lot more a bit more time to go through and she will mm -hmm. have um, a presentation a checklist what you need to see so for, for next week um, uh, we hope you all be back uh, next week to actually see a more detailed presentation from uh, Yasman so we I'm going to go through a few questions right now. Um, I know the chat is very busy. Can people do questions in the Q&A so that then it's a bit separate from the chat, uh, from the chat room? Because there's quite a lot going on in the chat room. Um, what I'm going to go through here, is, um, someone is asking a question about section 42 in terms of uh, the lease extension. Uh, yes, Jasmine, if someone yes. wants to buy a flat that's got a short lease uh, and then there's a, um, it's a what can you do what can you do to help them do that yes that's a very good question thank you for actually reminding me um, about this um, aspect sometimes when you buy a leasehold properties or you want to buy leasehold properties in auction you will see a lot of leasehold properties in auction with a very good price which usually if you, if they would end it, ended up in um, estate agents for a sale it would be let's say 400,000 pounds but you find you find the same flat in the auction let's say for 150,000 pounds. So what's the reason? Why the price is really good? Uh, it's not just because you, you are not the only person to find that price really good. There are thousands of people to find that price of, the, of, the, of that flat really good. Just because the lease sometimes is very low. When I say very low terms of the lease, I'm talking about less than 85, less than 70. Sometimes leases are 60 years, 40 years, 35 years. 25 years they are really really low lease section 42 is something is a is a is a, is a kind of a legal way to extend the lease section 42 when you have to agree with the seller that upon completion the seller serves section 42 notice on the freeholder and any superior landlord because in some cases you have a superior landlord and then you have a freeholder so section 42 notice has to be served on the superior landlord and the freeholder who can serve section 42 notice not you if you buy the property today and you are the legal owner of the property today you have to wait for two years to be a legal owner of the property and then you can serve section 42 notice on the landlord so it's for your benefit to ask the seller either most possibly before the before exchanging contracts that you will pay for all the costs because he's not going to pay for the cost. You, you will pay for the cost for him to serve Section 42 notice and for the, for the benefit of, this, of Section 40, 42 notice to be, to be assigned on you, uh, on you upon completion. Okay. okay. Yeah. Just, um, I mean, at times, thank you. That's a very good. Some of these things at times people always ask me, um, uh, um, Midas, what exactly do you do? And just to prove what Yasmin just said now, if you, uh, I don't think you see my WhatsApp here. Uh, there, there's um, a short list um, property that's been sold by auction house. And one of my clients is interested. I've mm -hmm. just emailed uh, that child on my WhatsApp. I've yes. WhatsApp the person that's in charge of that property. And I'm asking, oh, lot number this, is it one of yours? He says, yes. I say, oh, um, oh the, any, the legals are not up yet. He say, yeah, very soon. And I say, uh, do you have section 42 in place? What are the ground rents? What are the service charges? Would there be any viewings? He says, no, no viewings, but I will send you the legal pack as soon as we get it. So this is what my does. This is what we do for our clients. We intervene and try and get things done for our clients before anyone else even gets them. And, and again, even when I've looked through the legal pack myself, I'm not qualified to tell you to push a button to buy. 
I can look through the legal park and if there's like a short term in there, I can say don't buy it. But if I tell you buy, it means you need to go upstairs to Yasmin. Literally, she's upstairs, I'm downstairs. So if I say yes, then you can go upstairs and then, and then if she says yes, and then the book ends with her because she has an insurance policy to advise you, not me. But I can look at it and tell you if there's a reason not to buy. Then, um, uh, David, um, I, I sent you um, one of the lots in W11. Yeah, um, David, do you want to share your screen again to go to the, that lot in W11? I think, David, you, you're on, are you on mute? Sorry, yes, I was. Yes, yes, you, you had a lot on in W11 that I sent to you, which, um, um, yeah, if I'm... Um, if you could, do you um, remember that one? No, no, I'll go and find it very quickly. Uh, yeah. W11. Yeah, so it's... um. It was a leasehold flat? It's, it was a leasehold flat. Extra okay, so I'm just... What I'm doing, I'm just searching for leasehold flats, future auctions. Auction house, yeah. Yep, here it is. So yeah. let's just pop into it. Yeah, um, you can share your screen again and then just... Oh, yeah. Just go yep. through it. Uh, share screen. What we're trying to do is get David to analyze a deal that he hasn't looked at it yet. He yeah. can tell us a few um, uh, things about that deal. Okay. Is my screen live? Can you see my screen? No, not yet. Uh, share screen. I've, oh, sorry. Share. Yeah, yeah. I'm not good on technology. Okay. Uh, okay yes. That should be fine. Yeah, that, that's it. Yes. Okay. Well, th this is a property. Um, the first thing I, I, I do, the first, if I see a property I'm thinking of buying, the first thing I do is go and see whether it's been to auction before and look at what's happened to the street. Um, and first thing I can see is it was offered last month. Well, I put a phone call into the auction and say, um, why was it withdrawn last month? It may well be the legal pack wasn't ready, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But there could be information which would come out of that. I would then be going to see, look for similar properties um, in the area. And so by clicking similar properties, it will run a search show me what other flats in W11 have been to auction recently and this is a three bedroom flat so quite large guided at 475 there's the one again um, this is two bedroom available at 460 so with one just around the corner a two bed uh, was available at 460 reserved to 460 so you'd expect a, a three bed to be more than that all, all other things being equal etc etc and you can see we're now down to um, this one, uh, four rooms, three bedroom flat in, in what's looking a nice block. I don't know Notting Hill particularly well, but that sold 275. My next st strategy on that would be to um, go to the legal documents. As you can see, they're not available, um, but if they were in, in a, uh, my, my strategy for buying property, uh, and it works well for me at, at auction is when I see a property I like, first of all, I try and ascertain what it's likely to sell for. That's crucial because is it way outside what I want to pay for it based on previous evidence? It's probably not worth my while getting too involved, but if it doesn't sell, then I'll look at it as an unsold lot. Secondly, I will look through the legal pack. I have a very good relationship with a solicitor I've known for been acting for us for 35 years. Um, then what I do is I look through the legal pack looking for reasons not to buy. It might be it's a short lease and the person hasn't lived there for more than two years, so can't do a section 42. It might be, I've looked in the, in the uh, management accounts and there's no uh, sinking fund, doesn't seem to be any management, there's no accounts, that's gonna be a no-no. It might be that the lease plan shows it as a one bedroom flat, uh, sorry, the, the lease plan shows it as a studio flat and somebody's put it into a, uh, made it into one bedroom flat and not got free elders consent, it's an unmortgageable property. I look for reasons not to buy. It sounds a perverse way. If I find a reason not to buy, I might then speak to my lawyer. I had one the other day and, and I was a bit, bit worried about a covenant. And he said, yeah, no, good, good call, David, um, but we can get insurance for that. And on that basis, we then proceed. I, I didn't end up buying it uh, exactly. But, but when I found a property which I can't see any issues with the legal pack and everybody's got a different skill. But again, you don't need to be an accountant to see that there's no that there's no management accounts worth talking about. Then I would ask my lawyer to check, do you agree with my view that this property is not one worth going after? And, and he'll say, yes, on the basis of just what I've read on that particular point, I wouldn't buy it. 
uh, then I don't. I don't end up with a huge legal fee. But in all case, you must, must take legal advice from somebody like Yasmin who knows the property auction, knows where the snakes are, because there are a lot of snakes in the grass waiting to bite you. But with good, sound legal advice, you won't get bitten. And it is something you need to set up, get, get to know a solicitor um, way before you start looking for a property, because with catalogs coming out 12, 15 days prior to auction, um, you need a solicitor and Yasmin is one who can move fast and give you the sound advice. Always okay. get a solicitor. Okay, then uh, David, from um, your uh, analysis of lot number 38, um, yeah. how, where would that lead you? How would this the system actually guide someone through a price that they should be looking at, operating at? Uh, well, this, this is interesting. You, you will, but the, the, it hasn't been to, well, we know it, it was unsold previously. We've seen a flat, uh, in in W11, which is two beds sold for, and we haven't looked, you know, I haven't looked to see what the uh, um, what the description of the property was sold for was available at 460. That's where it's reserved. So this this flat would be a. I, I would be then looking at right move to see what similar things are selling for. We're looking for you know clear daylight between what people are asking in right move and where the reserve might be. And, and remember, it's guy price is 475. So the the um, Reserve could be anything up to five five twenty on this, uh, and you've got to make sure that you're comfortable with that kind of um, level. I mean, internal and, shops look reasonable. Yeah, and and then just um, having a bit more inside information about this property, just like David is saying, is when you have a system like this, it shows you the history. You can see that it came last time it didn't sell, and there's still no legal pack. So it means the problem is with the vendor. The vendor is having problems putting through a legal pack for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. In this case, which I happen to know a bit more about it, it's a vendor that lives abroad and there's communication issues with them getting their legal pack together. They were led last auction and this auction again, they're, they're running led and they, they have to sell. This is what having a, a system that gives you a history, you can, you, can, you can tell. If there is a legal pack and it's withdrawn, there might be a different reason. But once there's no legal pack, and you, you think to yourself, this was withdrawn last auction. They've had all this time. Why do they not have a legal pack yet? So these are some of the questions that make you know that maybe if you go, to, if you speak to the auction company, they'll be willing to negotiate uh, a deal out of auction because the, 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 the vendor is clearly struggling. So these are some of the tips that you can get from the system once you have a clear history of how the um, 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 auctions have been run. And then one for you, um, uh, Yasmin. So I want to just yeah. ask here, uh, how do overage, overages, how do they come about, actually? And then there's a second one about um, addendum, that if someone has instructed you and they changes in the morning, the, the addendum, how would that affect the instructions to you? So I, I just thought I'd give you the two questions that you can answer them one after the other. Okay. The second one is uh, if they instruct me and then they change their mind. No, no, I mean the addendum on the morning of the auction where... They turn up in the auction room and then there's some changes oh. where the auctioneer announces that there's been a few changes. Are you, do you know about those changes or how do they have to call you and tell you about changes that take place okay. in the morning? Okay, I can, I can, I can talk about it. Okay, the first question was in relation to the overage. Yes. Overage is usually for a piece of land that uh, there is a potential, um, you know, development on the piece of land. But let's say I'm selling my piece of land for let's say 20,000 pounds, but because I'm busy or because of different reason, I, I can't go through the planning permission uh, route and get the planning permission and develop the property myself. Maybe I don't have enough money. Maybe I need some cash or for any reason, I am selling my piece of land, but I will put the overage clause in the legal pack in the special conditions. Look at the special conditions. That's why it is important. Look at the special condition. If there is an overage in the in the um, special condition, it means that probably, probably not a hundred percent. Probably this piece of land has got a you know benefit of being potentially you know developed. If you spend money and get planning permission, you can probably sell this pro piece of land instead of twenty thousand pounds for four hundred thousand pounds because now you have planning permission for this piece of land. Okay, overage is always there. Because I, I, as a seller, I put the overage in my special conditions because I know one day you or someone else go, you know, spend money and goes and get the planning permission for this piece of land and the plan and that piece of land instead of twenty thousand pounds worth four hundred thousand pounds. 
I will reserve. It, it's, it's kind of a reserve uh, kind of option for myself to get paid again from that piece of land. I'm selling the piece of land for 20,000 pounds, but because I put the overage clause in the special conditions in the future, five years time or two years time, you, if you are selling the piece of land again, I'm taking, let's say, 50% of your sale price. If in five years time you are selling the property, that's not, sorry, not property, a piece of land for, let's say, 30,000 pounds or 50,000 pounds, I am reserving 50% of that sale price to myself, okay? Or if you are selling the piece of land with the planning permission, which the price is gonna, you know, all, the, all of a sudden increase to let's say 100,000 pounds or 200,000 pounds, I'm reserving the, you know, kind of option for myself to get paid 50% of the sale price and 30% from planning permission. So just be careful, overage, they, they can have two kind of, um, they can have two kind of um, uh, restrictions, restrictions with overage. It can be as overage on sale of, sale of the plot of land, and it can have an overage uh, when you get the planning permission for the plot, plot of land. So there are two, at least two overages, you have to look into it. And the other thing is, uh, which I forgot to mention, overage, there is a time for overage. I, as a seller, put the time like 20 years or 10 years from the date of the, let's say, completion for overage. From from 20, let's say from 17 of April 2020, if you develop the property, uh, the, develop the land, or if you resell the land for the next 20 years or next 10 years, I have the option to get paid again. That's for overage, and I'm hoping that I covered the questions for the person who's, who was asking. Absolutely, no, that 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 you, you done fantastically well. Uh, again, just to add more into your overage, one um, uh, during our workshop we cover overage again from two angles from the angle that uh, you've covered it where you have to check and see if there's overage and we cover it from an attacking point of view in terms of negotiation yeah let's, let's take for instance that uh, um, when I teach negotiation I say to people if someone has a property for sale they say oh yeah usually they say oh yeah we've got six planning for six flats we know you can go for eight we want 1.6 one of the ways that you can negotiate as well, you can suggest an overage and say, I think it's worth 1.4. Yeah. As it is, I will pay 1.4 now and put an overage in. If I do get planning for more flans, then I will pay you. So you can turn it around. You are suggesting the overage as a negotiation tactic. So all that we cover during the workshop, when we do the auction workshops, how to negotiate um, um, things, um, uh, a price, where as opposed to you waiting for an attack overage, you can put a defensive, um, um, you can actually suggest an overage as a negotiation tactics, which is something that we do fantastically well for our clients. So now is the next one, uh, the next question for you is um, addendums. So if there, there are changes in the morning of the auction, which the auctioneer, for those of you who've been to, to, to an auction live, uh, before the auction starts, you get uh, Andrew Binstock or whoever shouts all the instructions of what's, what's changed. If you have re review a legal park the day before and the changes in the morning, how would that affect the transaction? Okay, the, the rule is as it is. Okay, if when you exchange contracts, you exchange contracts and uh, you exchange contracts based on the documents in the legal pack. So you can't, unfortunately, you can't get back to the seller, as I mentioned in my um, uh, previously, uh, to seller and say, oh, two days ago, I looked at the legal pack, you didn't include the special conditions, and now I'm not going to pay, for example, for your cost or whatever it was in the special conditions. Unfortunately, the rules are, as soon as you exchange contracts, you are legally bound with all the terms of the legal pack and you are legally bound by the terms of the auction contract and the special conditions of the, uh, of the seller. If, for example, you are one of those cli uh, clients or one of those people that you get your solicitors to look at the legal pack in advance for you, the solicitors usually get notification if something is changed in the legal pack. If there is a document uh, deleted or if there is a document added in the legal pack, the solicitors always get um, notification so your solicitor can straight away look at that you know uh, changes in the legal pack to see what is the change okay what's happened what's the new documents in the legal pack and they can come back to you and tell you in the day of the auction an hour before auction that 
be careful because, for example, there are different type, um, kind of um, restrictions or terms added in the legal part. Okay, yeah, that, that's good. Thank you. Um, I've got one more question for you on, on the chat, but David, hello. If you can prepare to look at the ones that were on sale from a network auction, last uh, auction, I think I emailed some of the loss to you. Yep. While you are preparing to get to those, um, um, yes, there's one more here. What happens if someone has exchanged, paid that deposit, and they are not able, I think they say for circumstances beyond their uh, control, they might be funding or something else, they really cannot complete again. Uh, they can't complete in time, uh, and they, they just can't complete an auction commitment, and they've given 10%. What happens? Okay. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the, the basic rule is, as you know, as soon as you exchange contracts and you sign the contract, that's it. You pay the 10% on the auction day and you are banned to complete your transaction. If you are selling, you are banned to sell the property. If you are buying, you are banned to complete your purchase. And in an unfortunate situation that for any reason that is not in your control, you don't have you know, the, the completion funds to complete the transaction, you can negotiate with the seller to, to you know to ask her if he, if they can uh, extend the you know kind of completion date for you for another 20 days another 14 days for you to come up with the money and if they agree that's good you can you can you know do your best within those um, you know extension time one week two weeks 20 days to come up with the money to get your uh, financial sorted if for any reason they don't agree with the extension or if they agree with the extension but still you can't come up with the completion funds unfortunately you lose your your 10 percent deposit and this is not the end of it because the seller can serve a notice to complete and you are you are going to be liable for extra solicitors cost for the seller and the seller can go on and enforce the contract on you so you have to be careful if you are buying the property if you are exchanging property in auction with your company let's say a uh, limited company or with your personal name, the seller can serve a notice to complete on you and they can enforce the contract on you as well. So if you have money in your client account, in your personal account, in your company account, but for any reason you think, okay, I don't, I don't like this property. It was a mistake. Uh, I paid the 10%, but I'm not going to complete the transaction. Not only you're going to lose that 10%, the seller on top of that can enforce the contract and legally enforce the you know terms of the contract for you to complete your purchase in case if you don't have the money so that's it you just lose basically you just lose your 10 percent deposit but if you have the money in your account and in your company account then the seller can again can go against you know yourself to impose the contract the terms of the contract and you have to legally complete the transaction could i just add there that um that if, if you if you do just drop your ten percent and the vendor then goes and puts it in another auction and sells it for less money than what you bid for it, you'd be liable for that shortfall as well and all these costs exactly. and so doing. Absolutely, I was just going to add that. Yes, good. yes, Absolutely. got people. Yeah. So, so you need to be very careful when you uh, uh, before you um, you bid, and then um, uh, David, before you check that, I think Timmy Timmy has a question. Is what's the cost of EIG subscription? It's, normally, it's £475 plus VAT for 12 months. But um, for Midas members who join us today, uh, and of course, you, if, if you want to cancel, you can in the future, we're doing it 375 uh, plus VAT. Okay, great. So, yeah, so if, if you are interested, you can um, um, uh, email today. But, and then um, uh, the, um, there's, there's a for deal. Is this a comment or a question? There's one here about air rights. Okay, let me try and see if I can. Uh, okay. The party war guy, this air rights, there are implications of the party war act, freehold, freeholder consent, scaffolding license. I will go. To, okay, I think that's just a comment in the chat. It's not. Um, uh, it's not a question. I don't think so. Um, it's probably not. I think there's just a people chatting about that. Okay, let me just see. Um, uh, I think. Okay, I'm happy to stand. Did they, okay, do you have? details of properties in, uh, in Leeds area. Yes, David, can, you can go on a system. You can search yep. for properties. That are, you know, like David said, you can pick a city and um, uh, put in traps and uh, updates on it so that you can get alerted if there's any property that comes up. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's me here. So any office manager, um, any family office manager in the group, please let me know if you manage a lot of money. Anyone that has that's managing a lot of money, we're looking for an office 
a family office manager to be on the panel. Uh, the one or two that I know, they, they're not able to uh, be on the panel. So if you know anyone that's managing lots of money, let us know. Um, okay, David? Yeah. Yeah, if you just look at one or two, um, you can look at, there's a HMO that didn't sell in Wolverhampton, uh, withdrawn. Is this for? There's a oh. flood in Warsaw, as with two floods in Warsaw on, on, on EA, on, um, uh, Network auction. If you just look at those, we, we just. Am I, are you seeing my screen at the moment? Yes, we, we can see your screen. Yes. Okay. Um, what we've got here, I, so I'm just. Sam asked for network auctions, unsold lots. So I've selected England in the country, show of all of England. I've selected all types of property. I've come to specific date range from beginning of April uh, because the auction was held this month. And I've network auctions selected, unsold. And I hit search. And here are the properties which are unsold. Here, this is the one you're looking at here, is it? Yes, there's Several. two flats in, in Warsaw that yep. I didn't sell. And then there's one HMO in, in Wolverhampton where we can look at it um, from a deal analysis point of view. And then Yasmin can, uh, complain, can, can actually comment in terms of the legal pack, what's in there. Um, because the flats are single led. And then the HMOs, of course, um, are multiple lights. So just look at the, the, the legal pack and see if the legal packs are complete. I can't, yeah. I can't see it properly because I'm not. Um... Oh, are you using the phone or a desktop? I'm using at the, uh, the. I'm using my phone. That's why it's very. It's oh yes, very of smooth. course. That's why I couldn't share your screen here. So on, but this is the. Is more challenging. The, these are the legal documents for available for for that unsold property. Uh, and generally, where property is unsold, the auctioneer will leave the legal documents up for people who want to come and have a look at it. And we can see we got from accounts from 2016, 17, 18. So that's looking hopeful that maybe some sort of good management in place. The AST document um, got the contract, uh, EPC, fire risk assessment, information letting agent, insurance, lease, uh, office copy entries, leasehold plan, the LPE1, member and arts of presumably the. Um, management company which may be a combined freehold leasehold situation service charge budget for 2020 great to see that in uh and then NACC common auction conditions that's what they're selling it by so uh, there's no special conditions in here just on special sometimes they get slipped in at the very last minute you know even on, i've seen them uh, some vendors trying to upload them on the morning of the sale and in there will be snakes a uh, one common one is that they tr they try and sneak in as Yasmin said fees towards you know this that the holiday and everything else and instead of saying and the vendor and the purchaser will pay 14,000 pounds is the highest I've seen where we had a normally you'd expect to see if you're talking in terms of money a pound sign and a number um, what they sometimes do is put 14,000 pounds in words so if you're skim reading it looking for a pound sign because that means it's going to cost you money if it's a pound sign uh, you'll miss it and, and this is um, certainly in, in some parts of the Midlands, there's a lot of this. So just re absolutely look out for things like that in, in the specials. Okay. okay. So, so in terms of, um, so, so you can see a typical uh, legal park for a single let. And then if we look at one of the, um, the, the Wolverhampton one, will be, it's, it's a HMO. Um, uh, and you can see the, the legal park is quite complete uh, in terms of, uh, Yasmin, is there anything yeah. that you think should be in that legal park that's not there apart from the special conditions that um, has been pointed out? Okay, special conditions is a quite important one. Uh, and to be honest, I can't see the legal park properly, but because it's a HMO, you mentioned that the property is a HMO. No, this one, one is single led. This is a single led one. Lead. Yeah. yeah, that's why it's only got one contract. Okay, yeah. so in that, in that case, you have to see the lease and you have to look at the restrictive covenants in the lease to make sure how you want how you can actually let the property okay. yeah okay. Then, then so, if we look at the one in Wolverhampton that's a HMO you see yeah. the difference in them what I'm trying to get David to do here is to uh, demonstrate to you that the difference in the legal park that you see okay what like, do you know where which one was the HMO yeah it's Wolverhampton oh, the top one, one. Yep. yeah in Wolverhampton. okay yeah so we'll we'll um, look at the legal documents yeah. and here is the legal documents uh, coal mining report, you perhaps expect there. Drainage, home check, flood index, yeah. pinpoint. I think you've stopped sharing your screen. So. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we've got quite a few questions that have come in um, uh, into the Q&A, but I'm going to go through. Uh, 
Yeah, the special. Uh, this one has got special conditions of sale. Yeah. Um, I can't see anything relating to HMO specifically. What are we it looking has for? To documents from. Yeah, it should, it should have a, a few more contracts in there, mm -hmm. more than one contract. So you can see that when it's a HMO, uh, are we not, I think we're not looking at the right property actually. This, uh, this, this, this yeah, in um, um, last auction, uh, that's um, uh, I've forgotten the name of the street. Um, it, it's a HMO. What I'm trying to demonstrate to our audience is that because it's a HMO, you can see there are a lot more contracts compared to a single let. So if you go to buy a HMO, you expect a few more contracts, not just one AST. And if you, if you look at it, the, the legal parks are very complete because the vendor has had professional help. Again, people ask me, what does Midas do? Apart from buying, we help clients uh, sell as well. Uh, those are some of the, the properties I'm selling for my clients. And I'll make sure that when I help clients lease a property, they get all the legals are done well. I will, I'll, be, I'll be in the back of the solicitors. Yasmin is a good solicitor, but some solicitors get too busy and they think they can put your legal back last minute. If I'm selling for my client, I'll make sure that I push your solicitor really hard to make sure everything is in there on time. Uh, you seen the, um, uh, the Wolverhampton one? If not... Uh, so a Wolver a Wolverhampton one, this one was a Scarborough. Yeah, no, okay, yeah. The, the Scarborough one is it's a HMO, but it's vacant. So oh, that's why they oh, right, Okay, okay, yeah. Oh, let me yeah it, it's a HMO, but it's vacant. W Wolverhampton, let me that, see if I can find the that, Wolverhampton. That's a listing for, from a housing association. It, it's a perfect um, 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 uh, HMO. Okay. Um, I, I, I seem to know every listing on auction because I spend half my life on a, on on EIG. Yeah, thank so, you. Um, I, I love the EIG. And there's no unsold lot here in Wolverhampton. Maybe it's no, been they're, sold. They're withdrawn. Withdrawn, not unsold. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Withdrawn. Uh, only withdrawn lots. Yeah, either, either withdrawn or, or, or there's, I mean, there's, I think they had one withdrawn in Doncaster. Here, uh, here but, this one, uh, Raby Road. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yes. Okay, there we go. Uh, it looks like they've taken the legal pack down. Okay, then maybe they're probably making yeah. some modification, but that had a lot more documents in mm. it because it's a HMO, five tenants, so you see the five AST as opposed to one uh, that you see when you look at Birmingham, which is um, uh, this thing. And by the way, um, if anyone is looking at buying high-yielding properties out of London, uh, we, we have a good portfolio that we're selling with a network auction uh, out of London. So if you... If you if just let me know after this. Uh, Yasmin? Yes? They say, um, uh, we've got one here from, De from Peter. Uh, Peter says, Yasmin, typically how many land auction sales have the average clause? Roughly 50%, 80% or what percentage? Well, I can only talk from my experience. Um, sometimes the averages I've seen in the legal pack, uh, it was 50% for a sale and 30% for a planning permission when you obtain planning permission. And it depends, really. You can't really say 80%. It depends. To be honest, it depends. Uh, the, the best advice is look at the legal pack properly. Look at the, you know, conditions on the legal pack, transfers, transfer of parts, uh, restrictive covenants, because overage is within the restrictive covenants. So, and, yes. and of course, I think in fact, it's a bit of an unfair question to you, Yasmin, because you only deal with what comes to you. You, you don't go the, you don't go out looking at everything that's at auction. For so, I think maybe for you, it's probably you're not like us that go scouting everything that's on auction. But yeah, because I'm, you can't, you can't even say uh, what is the usual one because it yeah. depends on the you know the person. If you are selling your piece of land, okay, okay. I can I can for example as a solicitor advise you put fifty percent, put sixty percent. It depends. Then um, there's one here for, uh, for, for, for yourself and myself, David. Uh, how yep. common is it, this is from Peter again, how common is it for a vendor not to allow or refuse viewings? Um, it's very, very common where the, it's a regulated tenancy. Typically, it's a little old lady or gentleman who's living there and has done for ages, or would have done because, uh, uh, and in the interest of their own you know, personal safety, elderly people don't want, hundreds of people traipsing around the flat. Uh, these properties are rented out but the on a regulated rent, which basically means the rent set by the rent office of the council, rent officer of the council, is, can't be reviewed more than once every two years. And typically it could be uh, 25 or 30% of what it might be worth on an AST. And the idea is you buy these properties, they generally sell for less than vacant possession value because when the tenant uh, 
either passes away or, or moves to another place to live, the place becomes vacant and you get the uplift in value. Uh, and, and those, it is quite difficult to get viewing on those. What they might do is, is do a video of the inside. Um, and just to add to, uh, Peter, just to add to what David just said, the, the lot that we actually looked at in uh, W11, uh, funny enough, early morning today, I've exchanged quite a few emails today with Royal Borough of Kensington because the property is currently being led to them and they've got a notice to terminate the contract. And they're playing hardballs to allow viewings or for me to speak to the vendor to actually um, uh, do a video for me. So I wrote a long email to him today saying, guys, you let, if the tenant is nice to us, we might advise the buyer to keep them on. So I said, the buyer has to treat, uh, the, the tenant has to treat the buyer as a potential landlord in the future. So they, they're close to hostage negotiation. Uh, we, we, we try and negotiate access all the time with tenants, especially when tenants and vendors have fallen out and they have a problem, we tend to take over. We speak to the tenant and um, say to, I, I normally give them this line that the vendor is about to terminate a relationship with you. You need to be nice to the person that's come to view this property. Please offer them a cup of tea so that they can keep you on as a tenant when they do buy. So. The, the ways that we warm up the, the, the tenants to be nicer to, to, to uh, so, so when you go to view a property next time you offer a, a, a cup of tea by the, uh, the tenant, please call me and thank me for that advice, yeah? Okay. Um, there, there are quite a few more questions in the, uh, in the, chat, in, in, in the chat room there uh, for, for you. Okay, now I think there's one here for Paul. Paul said, if I want to sell the freehold, do I have to offer it first to the tenants or there is a way not to and sell to the buyers um yes I mean, that's for you in terms of um uh, selling a freehold what are the rights what are the stages of service to sell a freehold okay. usually when you want to sell the freehold you need to first legally offer it to the uh, to the tenants to the uh, not uh, when, when i say tenants to the leaseholders of, uh, in the in the building okay so um uh, so you have to, I mean, what, what is the process you, you offer it to the freeholders, uh, to the leaseholders? And then... you need, as a freeholder, if you want to sell the freehold, first you need to send a notice to the leaseholders and you need to offer the, you need to mention that you want to sell the freehold and give them some time to come you know, for, for, the, for the tenants, for the leaseholders, because they have to, they have to be, give, uh, be, be given the option to buy the freehold first before you okay. put the property in auction, the, the freehold in auction. Okay. Then I think um, um, these questions for, for, for both of you, all three of us can have a, have, a, have a bite at this actually. Is underwriting at auction a good way to make quick profit? Question mark. From, that's from Patrick. Yes. Uh, I think, um, I think um, Yasmin, we'll let you have a go because me and Debbie, we've been here for the last two weeks having fun. So let's, you have your phone <laughs> first. <laughs> that's fine. Sorry, can you repeat the question? It's underwriting at auction yeah. a good way to make quick profit. It depends really. It depends really. If I say yes, it doesn't mean that in all the you know uh, kind of uh, auction uh, property auction, if you underwrite the property, you can make a profit. But sometimes yes, sometimes no. To be honest. Okay. Um. Okay. It, it might. It might. You might do well to actually just under explain what underwriting is. What is underwriting, by the way, just in case. Um, most people might not know what underwriting is. Yeah, underwriting in auction is when you uh, when you approach the, for example, the the seller or the auction before the auction date, you offer your uh, your price to, to the auction house, but the seller for some reason they don't want to put the property off the auction. Still, the property goes into the auction, but you underwrite your price or your offer, whatever it is, with the auction house. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, uh, David, you want to have a quick uh, yes, uh, uh, yes. When, when you when you underwrite, you are exchanging contracts on the property prior to auction. So you're effectively buying it prior to auction, leaving it in the auction, in the hope that somebody will bid more than you do. And if somebody does, so you might say a property comes up, you underwrite at one hundred thousand, you exchange contracts at one hundred thousand, you pay your ten percent. It remains in the auction. Nobody really knows it's it's underwritten. Um, and if somebody comes along and, and bids 120,000 on it, then you'll split the 20,000 with the vendor and uh, yourself. So you can make 10,000. And a lot of people do well at this. Uh, some, all they do is underwrite properties. 
but you've got to be prepared and able to complete the purchase in case nobody comes along and bids 100. So if somebody doesn't bid more than 100 at auction, you will end up being having to complete the sale. If somebody bids 101, uh, then you'll get 500 pounds out of the deal, less fee, so basically nothing. So it's not just about putting 10% down. You may have to put the entire 100% down if it doesn't um, if it doesn't sell for more than you paid for it. And remember, in these times, rapidly changing, you might underwrite something two weeks ago, and a lot can happen in two weeks. Um, you know, the market could drop because something happens in, you know, all of a sudden we're locked down for another six months or something. And we won't ho hopefully that won't happen. So be prepared to complete the purchase is what I would say. And then just to add a bit, um, when you underwrite, um, we cover underwriting fantastically well during our uh, workshop. Um, so underwriting, when you underwrite, you would do everything like David said, as if you're buying the property, you transfer your 10%, everything. And by the way, most people think as soon as they underwrite, after the auction day when it sells, they would take their deposit. No, you don't take your deposit. You have to wait until the buyer completes before you get your deposit back and your profit because what you do effectively by underwriting you're giving the vendor the comfort of buying it so you are technically an insurance policy that sits there until the buyer buys it one of the typical questions that we get a lot at auction workshop is that if the buyer pulls out someone that has bought it giving 10 percent and then they pull out they cannot complete do you get part of the, uh, the, the the deposit? I believe the answer is yes. I've not experienced that before, but technically you will get a percentage of that 10% as well because you are effectively the seller of that property. So that 10% becomes profit and you share it between you and the actual owner of that property. So if you underwrite, the two things you have to bear in mind, you have to be ready to own that property if you have to. And secondly, do not take some quick money in thinking that as soon as it sells you get that money back because you have to wait for the 28 days or however long the completion is until the completion takes place you don't get your money back so again uh i'm gonna sound like a broken record if you want to find out more about underwriting and how to negotiate all this uh stuff you must spend a, a saturday morning with us and uh learn these things uh to get yourself ready for when the um 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 the um 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 uh, the um everything comes down uh, open and you can you can transact. Okay, let me put there's still a few more questions in here. I know we started a bit like 10, 15 minutes late because of the technical problems that we had. So we're just gonna go through for the next 15 minutes before we, we end. Um uh, we um so yeah and then um let me see Sam, can I just answer? Uh, ben kindly sent an email in, and I said it was a good question, so I'd answer it in the Q and A. Uh, ben asked, "Sellers have started including selling fees in the legal pack. What is a reasonable amount that they can pass on to a buyer, in your opinion, and what should it comprise of?" Well, that's uh, yes. As I said, there is a lot more um, costs coming through in, in in the legal pack, especially the specials. For me, if I was selling, I'd just like to say, you know pay me what I want for the property, not complicate it by putting these hidden fees in. Um, but everybody has a different view on it. The most important thing, Ben and everybody, is checking that you know what there is. Remember, it's the same for everybody bidding. So if a guy is asking for £15,000 towards his um, marketing costs, then as long as everybody's read that, they're all going to be discounting what they will pay by fifteen grand. Uh, it, but the trick is that they're, they're, the the vendors are hoping that somebody hasn't done their due diligence and is caught out by it. And remember, these extra fees will generally be liable for stamp duty. And with the fact that you're probably paying an extra 3% on top, it can get quite penal um, in that respect. And then just to add to what David just said and uh, everything that Yasmin has said, when, 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 when we as Midas, when we act on the behalf of our clients in acquisitions, there the, are the, the times when... Um, maybe it could be that there's some lots that cannot be sold before auction because if it can be sold before auction, we will get it out for you. If it cannot, for legal reasons, maybe it's a charity, we can negotiate even some terms that are in the uh, special condition 
only for you, not for everyone else that's bidding. So what we do, we negotiate and say, oh, okay, I can say to uh, maybe to uh, OSOPs, maybe to Stuart Gear or one of the directors of the company say, I've got my client, we're keen to buy, but we need to complete in three months, not, not, eight, not four weeks. So what they would do is that the solicitor will send an email to, to, to the auction company agreeing that if in the event that this person buys, then these conditions would apply. So, so apart from, I mean, uh, I, I always say price is not everything. At times, the deal itself is is more than just getting a quick uh, five thousand discount. There are things that we do uh, to add value as miners, where we can actually uh, vary the conditions for you when you buy the property. Whereas every other person that buys it is subject to the special condition. You would have a special condition that's only to you. It will not be in the legal pack. There will be an email either to your solicitor or to the auctioneer and to us. So we'll have the email saying, in the event that you win the property, these are the conditions that you have to go through. So which, when that happens, it works both ways because now you are now on steroids uh, to bid more. So, and then the more you bid, then other people are bidding as well. So it helps the vendor in a way. So you might ask, why would a vendor give you special condition? Because if you give one person a special condition, you know, like when you go to like a long distance race, at the beginning, there might be one child that's not going to complete the race. They just get everyone as uh, a pest setter. So you, you almost become a pest setter. But if you do win, then good luck to you. If not, you might help them go on a lot more. I think um, uh, Ranjit has been waving a book. That book, that the book that Ranjit, you get from Ranjit when you buy uh, by Piot and Jay Howard has a special contract on underwriting, a bonus contract on it. So if you get that, that book, we recommend to everyone that comes to the workshop, either you read that book before you come or after the workshop, if you read that book, it makes a whole lot of sense. It's a very uh, good book. It's a great book, well written. Uh, by uh, Piot and um, uh, and Jay, um, which again not gonna go long. Uh, I mean Jay, Jay and I have been friends. That's how I got to start doing events for auction house. It's through Jay. I you know we met like the first couple of maybe the first month when he just started work with auction house. So we, we've been friends for a long time. Uh, so it's good. Okay. Um, Sam, there's been a question. It's very, very quick to answer from Paul, and thank you, Paul. It's, the question is: Is the auctioneer obliged to say that the property is underwritten? No, he's not, and I've never heard an auctioneer announce that it's underwritten. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. That is, a, it's a whisper. No one knows. Shh, at keep all. quiet. Shh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta keep quiet because if you know it's underwritten, then um, okay, okay. That in Paul again. I want to sell a property at auction, and he has a mortgage. Does the bank need to authorize the sale, and will they put legal? options, restraints. Now, uh, Paul, I can answer that for you. Uh, Paul, uh, let's let's talk after this. You don't need to inform your bank. Selling at auction is not different from selling otherwise. So you don't need to get authority from the bank to sell at auction. However, as a responsible um, um, uh, third party listing, which is why for me, if I have to list a property for any of my clients, I will speak to them, ask them about their mortgage balance, if they have any charges, because it will be irresponsible of me for you to reserve a profit, have a reserve lower than what you can walk away. Because what tends to have is happened in the past where people have sold a property and they have a second charge on the property, they didn't uh, look at it. And then when they've sold at auction, they actually require money to close our books and they didn't have that money. By the way, by the way, Yasmin. Yes. Let me turn this into a question for you. Let me turn this um, uh, Paul's um, comment about him uh, wanting to, he asks if he has to um, inform his mortgage company that is selling, which I think is a no. But if someone sells as a vendor, if you sell, someone has bought at auction and you had a third party, second or third charge, and you cannot close your, um, you cannot transact, what happens? Well, uh, this is another aspect why you should get the solicitors to look at the legal pack for you if you are buying at the auction. If you are selling at the auction, then your solicitor will get the redemption figure from the from the from from your lender. So you don't need to inform the lender that I am selling my property in the, in the auction because your solicitor will obtain a redemption figure 
it means the money that you have to pay back to the uh, to the lender and what that means that yes you are selling the property and you are repaying back the whole you know uh, money which is or balance which is due to the lender if there is a third party charge on the property uh, if you are selling the property again, you you are well aware of that charge, and you know you have to approach those people and again get the kind of kind of statement, completion statement, or a balance or called again redemption figure from them, so the solicitors can pay them off. And usually, good solicitors will put uh, those restrictions or those financial charges in their replies to requisitions that they are redeeming those financial charges. Um, upon completion, which means when the solicitors get the completion money from the buyer, they will first, they will pay off the mortgage uh, mortgages, which is registered on the title or third party charges, which again registered on the property and they need uh, money to get rid of those charges. Okay. If you are buying on the, pro uh, on the auction, same thing. You have to make sure that if there is any financial charges on the property, it will be redeemed upon completion. Okay, that's okay. That, that's very good because at times we, we have some solicitors that put up the uh, the legal pack like last minute, and they haven't checked the third party charges, and vendors sell, and then they can't close their accounts. They, they, they end up in all sort of trouble, not being able yeah. to fulfill that. Uh, that said, okay, down. Um, okay, I'm, I'm I've seen um quite a few questions from Paul. I think Paul, we need to talk. I think you have quite a few questions, so. I will call you after the, um, uh, the, the, this event. We can have a quick chat and see if I can help you with uh, getting your property. Uh, so, okay, then there is an optional, okay, now underwritten, what is the rules of freehold price to, okay, there's one question here from, uh, from our party war expert, Dale. Uh, what are the rules for freehold price to leasehold lenders sell? Oh yeah, I think you've gone through that before, isn't it? Yes, that, it was that uh, yes, all working out what the that, yeah? lease extension's worth. Yeah, what was it? Say, what's the rule? Yeah, um, Yasmin, you might yes. just just if you can just summarize lease extensions. I think maybe it's to do with a lease extension. Yeah. What okay. Are the what's rules the rules of, yeah. For the for, for the, the freeholder, yeah. What are the rules for the freeholder to um um to to, to, to okay? They say, what are the rules for freehold price? To leasehold uh, holders sell, uh, it's not okay. very clear. Well, is it is it in relation to section forty two? Are they asking how much it's going to cost? I, I believe it's either section forty two or if uh, David, can, can yes. you make much of a, a question out of? Uh, of yeah, that, I, I, I think it could be that um, say you've got a property, you're buying a leasehold. I, I think this may be what uh, Dill was looking for. You're thinking of buying a a, a leasehold flat which has got, say, 50 years left on the lease, what would it cost to okay. extend the lease? And how, how is that valued? How does the process work? Okay. Usually you have to get, okay, as a as an owner of the leasehold property, you have to get your surveyor to go to the property and uh, value the property and value how much is going to be the premium for extension of the lease. Okay. This is one cost for a surveyor. Usually the surveyor cost, it depends. If the value of, if the terms of the lease is very low, like 20 years or 30 years, you need a specific surveyor and it, it can cost up to or more than 3000 pounds plus VAT, or it's just a normal surveyor. If the lease is around 75, 60 years uh, on expired terms on it, you can get the surveyor, uh, which usually uh, it's, it's different really, but usually it costs between 700 or 800 plus VAT. You have your own legal cost, and also you have the solicitor's legal, uh, landlord solicitor's legal cost because landlord is not going to pay for himself. You are liable to pay the landlord's legal cost, and also landlord will instruct a surveyor for himself to go to the property and uh, value the premium of the ex uh, lease extension, and you have to pay for the landlord surveyor as well. So. It depends really. It doesn't, uh, I can't really say how much you have to think about it, but more or less, only for legal costs, you need to think around maybe, I don't know, maybe 7,000 pounds altogether for your, uh, for your legal cost and uh, landlord's legal cost and the surveyor's cost. And then on top of that, you have the premium, which can be anything from 2,000 pounds to a couple of hundred thousand pounds. It depends on the location of the property. It depends on the how short is your lease because the shorter the lease of the uh, the lease, 
um, you are paying more, uh, you know, more for a, a extension of the lease. So it's better not to let the pre let the you know terms of the lease to go um, to go very short. Um, you you are advisable to think about extension of the lease when the lease terms is around 80, 85 years. Think about extension of the lease uh, at that time because if the lease terms goes lower than that, it will be more expensive to extend the lease. The landlord has uh, kind of more options to uh, argue or negotiate the, the the premium of the lease. And usually you will send, uh, your solicitors will um, send a uh, kind of um, notice to the landlord with section, 20, with section 42 notice to the landlord and they propose, let's say, 50,000 pounds for the extension of the lease. The landlord at that time will instruct his own surveyor the surveyor goes and value the property at 80,000 pounds. The landlord's got two months to come back to you and give his uh, either agreement to your uh, proposed figure or come up with his counter, uh, counter kind of proposal to say, no, it's 80,000 pounds. At that time, either your solicitor with the landlord solicitors will enter into negotiation between 50,000 to 80,000 pounds and get some, somewhere in the middle or sometimes it can be a job of the two surveyors. You know, your surveyor and the landlord surveyor can negotiate um, the figures and come, you know, come in the middle and hopefully they can agree a kind of figure in the middle. If no one can get any kind of uh, agreement, if there is no agreement between yourself, uh, your solicitors and landlord, landlord solicitors, then you go to the uh, land, um, land uh, tribunal for the, for the judge to come up with a figure in the middle. But usually, even the very hardest uh, kind of landlords or very difficult landlords, usually when it comes to the uh, kind of land tribunal, usually they will agree uh, a figure in, in between, between your figure and uh, their figure. Okay. Could okay. I just add there, Sam, yeah. that um, there are on the internet um, quite a few um, lease extension calculators. I think the uh, there's a leasehold extension uh, extension association something like that so if you google leasehold extension costs uh, you'll you'll get calculators where you put the the lease details in um what you think the flat's worth with a uh, if it had a hundred you know a long lease how many years you got left and it will come up with a, an indication as to where the fee might be it's it's not something that uh, you know is binding on any party and there are several calculators out there so do try them all and, and get a range of figures yeah, absolutely. Um, when I've negotiated these um, lease extensions for my for my clients, I've tried as hard as possible to avoid the long process that uh, Yasmin went through. We've tried to have a common sense approach where we say, okay, what number would work for both parties? That way we can get it done much quicker and within a reasonable, more reasonable time scale. So there are you can either negotiate it within the act as um, uh, Yasmin explained or if you have um, two solicitors and especially if you have a third party because I know most people try and save money by doing things by themselves but it's totally different when you talk to someone as you and if, when a third party talks I, I negotiate on behalf of my clients and when it's my own matter at times I get a third party person to negotiate because it's not emotional and I, I can make suggestions and pull out of it, which if you do it, you, you might not be able to. So it's always good to get a third party person to negotiate with your clients. And I think one of the um, advice I, I always get at times is that while you're doing an informal negotiation, you might start a formal one as well, just in case, especially if you're very close to the 90 year, just in case your freeholder is being tricky and then he negotiates with you for six months and then pulls out. So you start both in parallel, just to make sure that he knows that you, you've got all the holes covered. Okay, so I think um, I'm just gonna go through uh, more of the, oh yeah, I was gonna get Dill on to, to ask his question, but he says, my mic is not working. So I've been trying to get him on, but he says mic is not working, so he can't uh, really talk for himself. Um, okay, can you, oh, there's a question here for you, um, uh, David. Yep. Um, if I okay, yeah, David. I I, ha I have a bunch of flats in Poland that I would oh, be yes. happy to sell. What would you be? What would be the best way to sell them uh, for a good price? Is this something that you would 
know about or you just no in the um, UK? people have tried selling overseas properties at english auctions and it always well 99 percent of the time it falls flat on its face for lots of reasons um so sorry i i can't really um give you any sort of helpful advice there it's i think it's peter wasn't it who asked that question okay okay so uh yes that's one from peter okay so let me um well, can I, sorry, can I just add something, Sam? Uh, I might be able to help, if, if the question is from Peter, I might, uh, Peter, I might be able to, um, to help you in that one because I know some people in Holland. If you drop me a line after this session, uh, I'll get in touch with you. Okay, so let me, um, there are quite a few, uh, lots of uh, questions to going through in, 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 the, in, the, in the chat group. But I think in terms of the, um, um, we had a two hour session between two and four, but because we started a bit late, we had a few technical challenges, uh, and of, of course, Zoom is so busy now. The whole time as we've been doing this session, I've been trying to share live on Facebook, and it won't work. It sits on there because I think everyone is Zooming, everyone is going to Facebook, so it gets quite difficult with Zoom. And then we tried to get Yasmin on a PC so she can share her screen. It wasn't working. We got her on the phone, which is why she cannot see most of the charts because her screen is quite small. But we promise next Saturday, all of those will be fixed. Uh, and she, so she will come back stronger. So like I say, I'll be back. So that's how, Yasmin, that's how you're going to end. Before you leave, you're going to say, I'll be back. Yeah? So yeah, that, that was the way you can end your speech. When you, when, you, when you do your closing remark, they say, I'll be back. So, that's yeah. And then at this juncture, what I'm going to do is, uh, I would suggest that our panelists make their closing remarks. And then what I will then do is, um, because I've still got maybe one hour before I get my next engagement, I will stay on and take questions from people that have any more questions to ask or people that want have any deal that they want uh, maybe myself or if David is still free to, to look through. If anyone is looking at any particular auction lot right now, they might as well say it and then David can look at it and advise. Yep, happy to. Yep. Now, just, I know Yasmin has got somewhere to go to. So Yasmin, you want to yes. do your closing remarks and then say, I'll be back. Yeah, yeah, at the end. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody, for um, you know taking your time. That's this Saturday, and um, you know watching this uh, clip. Thank you so much, David. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Sam, for organizing this. Love um, to meet you, Yasmin. I'll give my uh, details. Uh, my mobile number is zero seven nine five eight two one seven three two two, and my email address is y dot a s a a d at rfblegal.co.uk. Uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to help. If you have any questions, please drop me a line uh, or just uh, WhatsApp me or message me and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, what I said in relation to the legal pack is not for uh, scaring people off the auction. It's just for you to go to the auction with a, you know, with a kind of um, prepared, basically. I want you to go to auction prepared and know what you are buying. It's not for you to scare you off the auction. Actually, auction purchases are sometimes very good purchases and you can find a very good deals in auction. So get yourself ready, get your solicitors, review the legal pack and go and bid on the property when you are ready. Okay, I will be back next week as Sam uh, suggested and hopefully to see uh, everybody else again. Okay, thank you, Yasmin. So I know okay. you might you might go. To, uh, you're going to a barbecue in the back of your garden. Well, anyway, I know you've got somewhere to go. <laughs> no, so gonna, so go enjoy the sunshine. Then, <laughs> thank you then, so much. Okay, then what I'm going to do is just ask the audience if anyone has anyone got any particular deal um, that they want De um, David to look at before he goes. Any particular auction lot that you want us to to look at? Okay, just put that in the in the chat. Let's um. Okay, let me stop sharing actually, so that if there's any, uh, David can now uh, can get it on. Has anyone got any particular um uh, lot? Let me see. Okay. Um. Let's see. Let me just look in the chat room. Okay. Um. Okay, so um, if they have, okay, um, David, they, um, just your second. comment. Um, uh, I, I got last night. I was on, and I had the um, OSOPs email me their commercial catalog. Yep. Um, it's quite 
is, is the shortest I've seen. In yes, a long indeed. Time. What are your comments in terms of auction house, very short catalog? What, why are we seeing shorter catalogs? Uh, well, for lots of reasons. I, I, I did some numbers for the Bank of England. They, they wanted some numbers on what's happening in the auction market. And, and the number of lots coming through for auctions in April uh, was about a third down, which I think, given the circumstances, was was uh, very, very um, uh, encouraging, actually, for the future. I mean, private treaties pretty much dried up, as far as I can see. I was talking to one major chain, and they had no exchanges at all. Um, the reason, reason I think all, all sort of small is... Um, Issues getting viewings done, sorry, getting uh, inspections done, and also viewings. Um, you know, you also sell a lot of retail shops. Well, if you're thinking of buying a shop, you at least want to go and look inside it. And if it's not open, because it's not it's not one one of the essential trades, you can't do that. Is the problem of of getting uh, the viewing, and uh, they are being uh, auctioneers have been increasingly conscious as to where the reserve is set, and the expectation of the vendor may be above where the auction is prepared to offer it at. So we we have seen it marked down. But the good news is that they've all got every auctioneer who was going to have an auction this month is going to have an auction. A lot of well, they're all going online, and uh, they're planning to do that throughout the crisis we have. So the auction market is alive and well, albeit numbers are down a bit. Okay, then um, again, I think the, uh, the thanks for that comment. The, the, the challenge, the COVID-19 challenge is probably a lot more in the uh, commercial property world than residential. Uh, because I, I have a, a lady called me uh, this week to help analyze a deal that she was buying, a commercial, and she was all excited about the deal. Uh, it would be good for me to, to, to get her through, we'll buy the property, and I had to analyze the business sector without saying much about her transaction. Mm. I looked at the, 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 the tenant. Of course, like David mentioned earlier, they're closed now. You can't go in to view. But I said to her, we don't know how long the lockdown will go for. And with businesses, you can stand out and you see a business. You don't know what's behind in terms of their numbers. Some businesses, after two months of uh, of lockdown might not come back so i said to her if you make your decision on the covenant that's in front of you you don't know who's going to come out of these dark days so i said to her you might be better advised my advice to you i'll be passing on a fee but i think i strongly believe that for this kind of tenancy you need to because you're buying on the strength of the cash flow you might need to wait and see how strong they, they come out however if you're buying a commercial lot that has uh, rip, and you have repurposing in mind, you feel you can do something different with it, then by all means, fly with it. Go for it now. I think there's a question here from Patrick saying, oh, I want to buy a property at auction and it's still is it still possible to get a valuation done and get a mortgage and bridging loan under the current situation? I'm very concerned that if I buy, I might have problems. What are your thoughts? David, I'll let you go first before okay. I uh, make well, a comment. Well, well, firstly, a standard sort of mortgage from the high street, you won't ever get good times or bad times. You won't be able to get it, or everything done in time to um, to work within the auction environment. So bridging finance really is your only option. As regards getting bridging finance, yes, uh, some of them don't need a survey done. Uh, Together Money, I know they're not active in the market at the moment. But they used to take the hammer price as a valuation and lend a percentage of that. It was 75, I believe it's dropped. Now 65, is that right? Um, yes, yeah, 65, loan to value. 65, yeah, loan, to loan to value. So you're putting in the balance of 35 plus all the extra costs, stamp duty, fees, etc., and any other of these funny purchases which seems to drop into the specials. Uh, but then, of course, when you want to go to long-term finance, then they will need a valuation. And is a is, is the property, uh, are you going to be able to get a value around there? If it's occupied, then you can't go in there, really. And he may not want to go around. So you definitely want to have it. Uh, bridging finance, I think, is the only solution at the moment, buying at auction or your own cash, a mixture of both. Um, and just be aware you might have bridging for a while while you get to a, a, a dropping in onto a longer-term finance. Okay. Then, then, then just to add a bit to that, uh, uh, Peter, did, uh, Patrick, um, a bit of pardon. There are lenders out there that are lending. Uh, there are valuers out there that are going to do valuations. I'm currently doing a deal in Wembley. Um, the, my client has been waiting for valuation to be done forever. It hasn't come through. 
funny enough, first today we were having a chat. I've given him, uh, because what tends to happen is that each lender has a set of valuers that are on the panel. Those are the valuers that will value for them when they have a client. So I've given him a set of valuation companies that I know are still working. Uh, like, is it Motlek? There's one, the one that I've given him to find out if they do, if they're on the panel. Because it, literally, if they're on the panel, I will call one of the, I'm very close to them. They can value, it's a vacant property. They would, they would value it. I can call him. Someone will come from there and value it immediately. Luckily enough, his call is um, a broker. There's spoken to the uh, the lender and that company happens to be on that panel. So what will happen now, he will get instruction changed to that uh, company and will get the valuation done. Yes, it's not the same, it's difficult to do deals, but deals are still being done. Uh, but we're having to work a lot harder. We're having to look for ways to, uh, to, to do deals. We're making way. Uh, and again, we have to make way for, for, for deals to be done, uh, otherwise, we might as well all go home, even though we're all home anyway, but yes, um, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, so yes. Um, okay, any more, let me see any questions. Um, um, that, okay, then what I'm gonna do um, right now, I'm, I'm going to promote anyone that wants to be on the panel uh, to just get people on so they can have a chat uh, deal. C can you come on? Okay, I don't know if Dio has um, has got a speaker now, so we can, we can bring him onto the panel. I was looking at just promoting people on to, to come and network and, and share their experiences. Apart from uh, Paul that said they're selling, is anyone selling right now? Who else, if you just uh, indicate by show of hands. Okay. Um, let me see if a post to the, um, is there anyone buying anything now through an estate agent? Or through, uh, or looking at an auction lot at all? Okay, there's some hands up. Okay, there's a hands up. Okay, let me um, allow, uh, okay, you, you can talk now. Do you want a camera? Okay. Uh, okay, you can talk right now. Hi guys, uh, well, thank you Sam for putting this on. Um, okay. Sam just turned his microphone off. No, 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 it's, so. um, he has to do it, but okay, let me see. On mute. Yes, okay. Hello. Hi, hi Sam, hi everyone. Thanks for, thank thanks for putting this on Sam. It's been great. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, I, I've been looking for, um, I've been looking for uh, some places to pick up just to try and capitalize on the current opportunity. Um, and my background is I'm based. Um, I've, I've got a I've got a moderate sized portfolio in Surrey, uh, which I've kind of built up over over the last ten years, um, and it's. Um, I the thing is I looked at the most recent auctions and I've noticed that the there hasn't been a, a huge sort of market reaction as yet, um, but you know kind of kind of looking at historical data there tends to be a little bit of a lag behind the stock market falling and then property prices changing, so I suppose. My question really to, to David and potentially yourself as well, Sam, is, is you know, with your experience in property over the years, um, have, have you noticed that um, auction prices kind of react, um, react sort of a certain number of months after a, a, a change or is, or is it quite unpredictable or is there any sort of information that you can kind of share um, on your experience um, from the past, you know, to the current day situation? David, you, yeah. you, you got, you got well, all the information. Great, and thanks for, thanks that's for the good, question. Great, that's a great question, actually. Yeah. Uh, have you been looking at our site to see the price, or are you just going around to all the individual sites? Today? No, no, I, I've, I'm, a, I'm a massive fan of your site. So, great, thank you. I've, 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 I speak to Bruce often at your... Oh, good. Yes, lovely chat, Bruce. Yeah. Um, good. Well, yes, I, I, they do act really quickly. Um, the auctioneers are very attuned to what's happening in the other market. I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, in, in the commercial world, but it happens in the retail world, there's two main uh, commercial auctioneers. There's Allsop and there's Acuitas. They hold about seven auctions a year. Um, Allsop always go first, and Acuitas are three or four days later. 
that night when the all shops come results come out uh acuitous will be going through looking to see where the yields have moved to so typically you might find that say say uh, I'll, I'll give you an example a lloyd's bank with with 15 years on the lease all shop might might have sold two months ago it might have sold for off a yield of 4.6 percent but it's one's just gone to the auction and the yields moved out to uh uh 4.9 percent and so the price has basically dropped you know the people the market's looking for more return uh for the money a high yield for the money acuitous on that on the days after the all shop sale and before their sale will be speaking to vendors and say the market in in all shop has shown this is where values are we've got to have a discussion about where the reserve is we want to see the reserve come down to reflect the changing sentiment so it can change literally overnight the market they'll be onto it and i know um you know, all, all shop, uh, Savills, Harmon Healy, Network, all, Auction House, London, etc., are all looking at each other's results to say, gosh, I thought I was going to go for more, or that went well, and, 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 and reflect that in, 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 the, uh, in the reserves that they set, which are often set, you know, left uh, finalized and might be tweaked before the auction room, and use what, what they've seen in other markets to go to a vendor and say, look, this is just too much. It's pointless offering. You're not going to sell it. We need to get it down. So yeah, it, it's a very quick reaction. It's very very fast. And then just to um, to add to um uh, to to David's comment, um, I, I'm I'm scouting through my emails to look for some emails that demonstrate to you how quickly uh, auctioneers uh, act react to situations. That particular lot which David looked at in W11 that didn't have a legal pack, the vendor is resident abroad. She's very busy, and. It, it didn't sell last auction because of the legal. Now this is in the catalog again. Now she hasn't yet pr uh, produced the, the legal part. The solicitor calls her. She's busy. I sent her a long email that has got her on, on sitting up because Andrew Binstock has said if he doesn't sell in May for the next auction, the reserve will have to go down by fifty thousand. So I think for her now is do the legal part now or you lose fifty thousand because the, the reserve will have to go. Auctioneers, they would actually react as soon. You see, like David mentioned, um, um, auctions are every seven weeks. In, it's like a rugby uh, um, a crunch where seven weeks and then they move to the next seven weeks. If there's an auction on Monday or Savos or any auction that doesn't do well and there's a different one on Thursday, they will start trying to reduce their, their, their results. Estate agents take a long time because an estate agent, it's it takes a deal, it takes maybe, probably about maybe four months for an estate agent to complete a deal. So they have a long period to, to react to the market. Auctioneers will react almost instantly. Right now, the, um, uh, the guides now that we're offering people are different from last auction. So if you didn't sell, uh, one of the, um, the, the, the problems where my, um, uh, some of the laws that were not so or withdrawn from, um, uh, network auction is if my clients they were a bit reluctant to, res to agree to the reserve if they had done it the auction before last the first time we had a discussion they would have all been sold but because they delayed it's not it, it didn't sell so with auctions it's almost like a narrow miss everything can change quite quickly okay okay thanks thanks so helps. much yeah i think um that's that's really helpful so um so just in terms of trying to set a, a strategy going forward, so do you think that because auctions react so quickly, do you think the bad news in the market has already been priced in? Or do you think there's further room for, um, for fall in, in, auction, in, in property prices in, in the auctions over the next month or two? Um, it's, a bit of, it's, it's a difficult question, but, it's, it, but I'm, asking, I'm asking on your opinion rather than you know, on, on concrete facts. Okay. I think a drop has been priced in already. Um, and, and it, it could go further, I think, yeah. Yeah, I, I think in terms of right now, the, the, the two, uh, the, the way my comment on that is uh, um, right now, because valuations are difficult, access to properties are quite difficult now when they have a tenant. So right now, we are listed, taking properties for the next uh, auctions, we are desperate for properties with no tenants in because then we can have viewings. So right now, the, 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 ex, the, the external factors are affect the pricing. So if 
you have a property now with a tenant in situ, the pricing will, will have to be lower because viewings will be difficult. The, the, the third party things are really do not have any, any not much to do with, with, the, with, the, with the value of the property. But if, you, if I have a property right now for my client as vacant, the auctioneer is more readily able to, to agree to a higher reserve because that property is more sellable. So there are restrictions in place, which hopefully in three weeks, when those restrictions go away, then we have a more even market that we can then see the right effect of it. So to, to make it your, to, to give you a short answer, we have third party, there's a lot of noise in the background. So it's quite difficult now to price um, um, uh, the effects into a property. So there's a lot of noise, there's dis discriminatory pricing based on access, I'm looking at the property in Stephenish, and um, uh, the auctioneer came to my client with a very low reserve, and my client wants a bit higher. The moment that I told the auctioneer that it's an owner occupier, so they're quite willing because when you are the owner, you're selling, you're more motivated. They're quite willing to to let people they go to the garden, let people come and view the property if they need to. The auctioneer was more willing to take that property on. Like, oh, great, Sam! Thanks for bringing a property that someone can see and view. It's amazing how something that we take, we used to take for granted, right now to have a property that can be viewed, it's like, yes, you've invented something that no one has. So yes, in terms of pricing, it would take a while for us to actually have right pricing based on the changes, because the, the background noise is really uh, creating a lot more uh, nuances than, I would say, as soon as the lockdown ends, then you will actually see a proper pricing uh, taking into effect what's happening. But right now, it's a, it's, it's a hit and miss. Okay, thanks ever so much. Just, yeah. just want to ask as well, are we able to, um, just because um, the, the slight technical issues, I was wondering, will we be sending the uh, recording around for the, for the presentation? Yes, the, the recording, um, RT would actually, um, um, tonight she'll put it onto YouTube and then send it to, uh, send it a link from our YouTube channel. Because um, mm -hmm. I think uh, Zoom, we used to keep the record and then share them, but Zoom is clearing them out unless we buy a lot more space. So she would download it, put it onto the YouTube channel, and then send it. So if what you could do, everyone that's here, if you go to our YouTube channel, My Dad's Property Group, you can like it because once you once you click like, then um, you, you as soon as we add any video, um, you will get um, uh, notified. And and by the way. Uh, Ranjan is the only YouTuber, so I'm not, I'm not trying to be a YouTuber at all because that space is taken by, by Ranjan. So it's just, um, if you like our My Dad's Property Group, we'll, we'll load this up and then you can get notified as soon as it goes up. So check out YouTube. If you go to YouTube, just type My Dad's Property Group and like and subscribe to um, our YouTube channel. As soon as we load this up, you, you'll get it. Thanks ever yeah, so much, so, Sam and uh, David. Thank you. That's fantastic. Okay. I think there's some hands up. Uh, any, more, any more comments? While you're waiting, Sam, for some comments, um, I've been asked by quite a few clients over the last couple of weeks. They say, looking at the auction results, there's a lot more lots being withdrawn prior to auction. Um, and yes, there is. And I thought I'd just explain why this is. Um, up until uh, the lockdown, all the auctions, pretty much all the auctions were being held in an auction room. Now it's 100% online. And in the auction room, as a lot of you will know, you can just turn up uh, and register to bid and then you can bid on any lot you want to bid on. So an auctioneer, when he's faced with the property, uh, he would um, offer a lot and then if he hasn't got any bids, it's going to be marked down as unsold. Now, with internet bidding or, or all the auctions being online, either broadcast, or fully automated eBay style, or um, broadcast with an auction in the room. Everybody's having to register prior to auction, and you know, and they they close the registration on the morning of the sale. So if an auctioneer has got a lot where nobody has registered to bid, he knows it's definitely not going to sell because there's nobody who, who can bid on it, and it gets withdrawn at that stage. Uh, so you will see. Um, a lot of lots, uh, a lot more lots withdrawn. Nothing to worry about. It's just the auctioneer had no bids and wasn't going to pointless offering it because nobody would would bid on it. By the way, um, good good shout, David. Do we have any estate agent on on the call? It'd be quite good to get a perspective of an estate agent because um, we we seem to talk about auctions all the time. Um, is there any estate agent in the house at all to give us a perspective of an estate agent? 
Oh, okay. Um, is, is there any anyone at all? I've actually unmuted everyone so that anyone can talk now. You can just talk right now, and I think right now we are in the stage where uh, Ranjan will soon put his background, which is a wine bar. But I don't know if it's too um, <laughs> uh, uh, Ranjit. I don't know if it's too early now for 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 for, uh, for, for a drink. But Ranjit, I think you might as well offer it. Let people say no. Uh, Ranjit, I think it's about time you open the bar and then let people decide if they want to uh, or not. Yeah, I'll, I will do that shortly, Sam. Yeah, so Ranji will soon open the bar. Uh, and of course, <laughs> all the drinks will be on my desk. Uh, I'll put my credit card behind <laughs> the bar. So good to see you, Peter. Then, yeah. We'll see you again. In, in the absence of estate agents, um, uh, if there was an estate agent, we'll get that, um, that view. Without an estate agent, we can feel free now to say anything to slag them off. At least there's no one. We're not, we're not going to be offending anyone. Um, uh, and I'm going to ask, is there anyone here in any business that they're doing, that they're doing something differently from the way they used to do it because of the, uh, the COVID situation? It, be, be, before people go, in case you're shy or you're thinking about it, I'm, I'm telling you about myself. We, um, as a company, we, we do, uh, we're fantastically busy uh, buying, acquiring properties on behalf of clients, selling, doing auctions, doing events. With not when we acquire properties for clients, we give it to third party uh, uh, partners to actually rent out. We, we don't actively rent properties. But with moments like this, uh, not only have we uh, pivoted, uh, people use that word pivot quite a lot, but we have pivoted by moving all our events online, that noun. And secondly, this week, because we've done quite a lot of events for Harrow, Brent, Barnett, all the councils in London. I am on first name basis with most of the, uh, the, the housing uh, directors and the licensing officers. Um, I got a call from them saying that they're struggling for properties for lots of homeless families. Is there anything that Midas can do to help? And I said, oh, of course, we can be of service. Um, we, um, uh, Ati quickly did her magic, which only Ati can do. Uh, shoot out an email to, uh, to a few a selected set of some landlords from North London. Uh, it is the quickest response that I've had to an email in a while. Within a couple of minutes of her sending that email, we had so many people writing back saying they've got properties that are vacant. Suddenly, I turned from being the auction guys, valuing for sale, this, I've been almost a Latin's person. And why they came to us is because all the estate agents are closed. So someone has to fill the gap. So we, so for the last week, I've been viewing properties with Harrow, Brent, Barnett, with the council uh, getting properties from landlords directly. Oh, wow. Yes. Thanks, uh, Ranjit. I think um, I've got my, uh, my cup here. Um, okay, the bar is open. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. So, yeah. So the... Um, um, uh, so what I've been doing, just uh, I lost my train of thought there. So what I've been doing is getting properties from vendors, from uh, landlords that have vacant properties. If you have a vacant property, if you email me, we will get it to um, to one of the councils to put our tenants in. We strongly believe what's happened now, it's made people more open to take social uh, tenants, especially because we're not charging you a, man a management fee. We are, it's a service that we're supporting the councils, so you don't have to pay any, any estate agency fee. And what we're doing with some of the boroughs is that we're actually negotiating a very good package, which will give you maybe a six month bond as, as a holding deposit. So in the unlikely event that the tenant uh, does not qualify for benefit anymore, you can actually uh, cash her in. So we've had to pivot our business because it's, I have a whole lo lot of properties to sell, but either we cannot get access to them. Or, uh, so I thought, what do I do? I decided now, if you have a property to let, you let me know. It's not something that we used to do before, but it's what we're doing now. Anyone else got any, um, um, uh, any comments? What has, what, what has changed in your day-to-day yeah, -day yeah, -day business? Say something. Yes. Can you hear me? Um, yeah, one of the biggest, I mean, it doesn't affect me personally, thank heavens, but um, 
anybody who's got serviced accommodation on, um, uh, you know, Airbnb or anything like that must be having a complete nightmare because um, their n n normal expectation is 70, 80 percent um, occupancy. And that must be going down to about zero. So are you finding there's some Airbnb type properties that are being repurposed for social or, or, or yeah, Peter, um, you, you are, you know, uh, you're a clever chap, uh, got the clever glasses, clever look, everything. You can read my mind. In fact, one of the um, um, the calls I've got, I've got three, this uh, gentleman has got a block of 12 flats in um, um, NW5. He's called me, he wants to give three of them to social housing uh, because he's looked at estate agents to rent out three. Uh, because the, uh, the way he's worked out, I think that the 12, I think three of them have a different entrance. So he thought he would take those three, put them on long-term lead, since they have a different entrance, it's a converted block from the rest. I quoted him, it's about a, a hundred pounds or so, or, or, or 150 less than what the estate agents have quoted him. But we are not charging a management fee because we're doing this service to, uh, to, to as help to the um, um, uh, to the council. Of course, I must say they do give us what they call an incentive bond. So I'm not entirely doing it for free, but I'm not charging the landlord. But the council will give us a, uh, an incentive bond for 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 bringing that property on. He, he thought it's a no-brainer because he's not going to pay any um, 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 uh, charge, and he thinks going forward he would want to keep those three properties straight through long term in the, in the private sector and there's no better way to have a government i mean let's put it this way if there's an order a stacking order of companies going bankrupt don't you think that the local authority will be the last to uh, to go out of business so if you want a long-term tenant let us know who can help you with that but yes it's a good shout service accommodation if you need to uh, de, uh, the risk, you can take one or two of your properties and um, uh, put them out to um, social tenants. Yeah. Any, um, any, any comments? Let me see. Okay, I think there are quite a few questions again. Okay, hi Sam. I'm back in the room. Oh, okay. I think that's a, a, a deal. I think I don't know if he's back now and ready to to talk about party walls. Uh, uh, deal. I think if you're here, like, please just tell us. It'd be good to, to, to just know about party wars because everyone calls Dill the party war guy. Let's find out. Is it uh, you put wars between people and parties? What is a party war? Uh, where, where is he? He says he's back in the house. Where, where is he? Let me let me bring Dill on the, on the panel to explain to us what exactly party war means. Uh, I know people hear this all the time. Um, and to be honest, um, I was chatting with a client already, and I mentioned Dill. That Dill comes to events, he talks about party wars. No one really knows what he's talking about because, unless you are in it, my client is actually converting a big house in um, in Ealing to six uh, flats, and um, I went to see them to see how it's progressing. They've got people working on site, social distance uh, respected, of course. So, and they've had to slow down the works because there's a neighbor that's complained. So they're having to get surveyors in. That's like, oh yes, that's why, that's why, that's what Dill talks about all the time about party war. Yes, it's good to be at a party where there's a war. So where's Dill? He says he's back in, but I can't see him. Oh yeah, Dill, yeah, this is him. Yes, Dill, tell us, where's the party war now? Yes, um, I, I, I hope Dill can talk now. Hello. Hi, Sam. Sam, pleasure yes. to be here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about the party wall. What is a party wall? Yeah, so basically the party wall is, is the wall that divides two properties. Yeah. Now, uh, we have to be careful. It's just not, it's, the legislation doesn't only cover the, the, the division between two properties. It also covers excavation and a whole bunch of other stuff. That's why when you look at the Party Wall Act, the actual title of the act is the Party Wall Etc. Act. Okay, did you, before you go, did, did you hear my rant before I introduce you? Uh, yeah, oh, just now, yes, yes, I did. did. Okay, yeah, because like I said, just after Ealing Station on Oxbridge Road, there's a big, it's a project there, it's all sealed. Yeah. One of my clients is doing that project. They're yeah, doing yeah. investment, and a tenant, they haven't got any wall. It's like, next house, 
they've put almost an injunction for, to their work and they're having to do so. It's just explain yeah, it's, what party war is and how it all comes about. So basements are, 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 the, are probably the most risky type of works you could do in a residential setting. And unfortunately, it's not uncommon to hear this scenario where, where ideally you should do a, a notice at least two months, ideally for us four months, but it's uh, an excavation, that's a, two, that's a one month notice. You need to do that, go through the process before you go anywhere near starting the works. And it's not uncommon for us to get to a stage where no one's bothered doing it and then the builders have to suddenly stop works. Um, so th th the purpose of the legislation is twofold. First of all, it's there to help the person doing the project to be able to carry the works out. It's not there to stop them. And the secondary reason is it protects the neighbor's property. And the other side effect you get out of this legislation, it should stop neighbors going to court. Obviously something quite... Something quite Sorry, I've got feedback going on here. I've got feedback going on here. Um, something's gone quite substantially wrong here, where where they're having to go to court and get an injunction. So, and it's and the onus is always on on the people doing the building works to to make sure they comply with this legislation. Okay, okay, so that that's good. So for anyone that is looking at going into into development work. Or uh, is it, does it depend on the scale of the work? Yes. No, no. So at any any project in England or Wales, yeah. regardless of whether it's um, commercial or residential, there's elements of notifiable works in it are notifiable under the party. <laughs> I think, I think Shola's is on the phone. Well, I've, I've unmuted everybody. Maybe okay. If you're on the phone, you can just mute yourself. Who, who's it? Shola Tuano. Yeah. Okay. Right. I think I, I unmute everybody so anyone can talk. So that we're not. Uh, and David, if you have your back right, you can make a closing comment anytime. Now yes. No. Just... I've got to be. Uh, I've got to go out. Actually, on a run. My daughter's trying to get me fit. So five o'clock, uh, yes. we go out running. Uh, yeah. About so, so, so okay. Four that, K today. Good. Uh, Thanks so much, David. No, thank you. Uh, lovely yeah, to meet you. Great, great meeting. Great, uh, yeah. great presentation. David, thank you as as ever. We uh, we'll talk again offline and decide what yep. we'll do next week. Uh, thank you for. Thank you, David. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely to hear all the comments. Thank you very so much. Like say, and everyone can everyone can talk. I've unmuted everyone. So you can make your comments. So, Sam, going back to party wall mm -hmm. questions, I'm, yes. I, I was inspired by your presentation the other day. I'm looking at, sorry, um, I, I, I found your meeting very inspiring, especially when you said you get, uh, Zoom and learning. Let me mute someone here. I think they're not. Sam, someone is speaking on the ground. I think he's speaking Yoruba, so maybe he's one of the guys that's the Nigerian name, Shola. Yeah, yeah, let me, yes, of Shola, Shola. So, of oh, you can, yeah, I'm gonna come to Joe, I'm gonna come. How do you know that's Yoruba? Guys, he's speaking my language, yes, I can understand what he's saying. I understand everything he's saying. Okay, okay, that's fine. Because he's, saying something he's, he's not talking anything bad, he's just talking to someone, one of his family members. I, I, I want, I, I watch, um, no, it, it's a long story, but let, let's go back to party wars first before, before yeah, I bring yeah. that story up. So, yeah, so uh, for the basic sort of works in residential settings are when you're doing a rear extension, a loft conversion, taking chimneys out a basement and very occasionally Hi John, you got a question? Hi John, you got a question? Okay, I, I've, I've muted John here. Yeah. Okay, go okay. on. So that, those are the basic works in residential settings and, and, and obviously applies to residential and commercial projects. But within a particular development or a refer project, you need to look at what works you're planning to do to look to see if they're notifiable under the Party Wall Act. If they're notifiable, then you have to follow a process and ideally you want to talk to your neighbours. Uh, one of the major reasons behind the Act is to make sure you can carry out your works and if there's damage, it doesn't end up going to court. So your neighbor, if, if you follow the process, 
The whole idea behind the process is to keep all the parties out of court. Now, the example you've given there where they're ending up with a with an injunction, uh, someone's obviously not been advised properly and they haven't started this process at the right time. So unfortunately, that's one of the sanctions you have in the party wall act where, whereby they end up going to court where, where there's no, where the process hasn't been followed. So um, I, was, I was on your other, other webinar earlier and, and I'm, I'm looking at trying to do a webinar where I can give some party wall training and your, your, your meeting the other day was very inspirational where you said, I've learned Zoom and learned how to do it. So that's inspired me to try and do self-training for me. So thank you for that. Uh, okay, well, at my age, I can still learn how to do Zoom in three days. So I think everyone can learn. So yeah. Well, well, well I mean, 21 is not, a, not an age to be worried about, Sam. So, well, you know, I guess, for... yeah, yeah. I <laughs> guess at 21, you can drive forward and reverse, which is fine. Yeah. On that, in, in, even after leaving the bar, but I don't, I don't, I don't encourage it. That after, after ranges, but don't drink and drive. Yes. So yeah. So, so I've got to disappear now because I'm going to do a practice Zoom session with with a couple of colleagues. But, okay. Um, I'll let you know what we what we're doing about our training, and more than happy to touch base with you and see if we can get something together. Absolutely. And if you need any advice on Zoom, like I said, I've, I've been trying, I've been playing now with Zoom for the last sort of two months a lot. So I've found out a lot of things about Zoom, how you can integrate it to third party uh, applications to collect payments or do other things. There's, there's a lot you can do with Zoom that I've found out in the last couple of weeks. Um, so, yeah, so, so let me know if you need. Um, yeah, brilliant. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. I'll say Thank Great you. meeting. Yeah. How old are you, Sam? Yeah, I think I'm, sorry? I said, how old are you? Oh, wow, well, I can't remember. I've, I've had quite a, a few, one of, a, a bit too many drinks, so let me check it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, seven, why you've been looking away, I've been in the bar drinking. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you were not seeing me. So one, one, one's been drinking, then the memory goes, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, to move that. But yeah, all it is too young enough to be able to learn Zoom in three days. Just, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, what we say. I think I've got um um um. We could actually to, to know what Patrick does. Actually, uh, Patrick's he's asked. Uh, pa Patrick, are you there? It could be good to know what uh, what Patrick's tech is. Because I was um discovered that the, when you have an event like we do for the last seven years, we've been having lots of events. That usually in the audience you have a lot of specialists, people that have a lot that they can share. With people, um, what about you? Um, Afwa, are, are you there? Okay, I think I think some people might, they might have walked away from their terminals. Look, I'm trying to call some people that I can recognize them, just get that that tech. They might we might all learn something from them. Uh, Jennifer, oh, okay, Patrick seemed to come back. Okay, but Patrick's not there. Jennifer is probably not on our, uh, on our station. Um, it'd be good. Anyone has got any um, any comments to, to, to make? Like I was saying um, about estate agents, um, is that most on most of the high streets, when you go on the high streets, the estate agents, what they've done, they follow most of their workers uh, just to keep their wage bills down. Um, but the, the problem with that is that a typical estate agent takes about eight weeks to exchange a contract. And after exchange eight, eight weeks, then it takes maybe about four four more weeks to complete so so an estate agent takes typically uh 12 I'm weeks right. so yes. deals. So, and, and when i say 12 weeks that's from when they get um that's from when they get, get an offer but from the day you actually um uh instruct an estate agent it takes uh, maybe probably um um about eight weeks to get eight, eight to 12 weeks again to actually get um, in the first place because what most estate agents do, uh, if you were following the press last a couple of, maybe about last month uh, or the month before, there was an estate agent that got fined for uh, taxes. What, what they do is that they come in, they, 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 um, um, they offer you a very high number to get you listed. And then they have a team, a psychology team that spends three weeks trying to manage your expectation down. So they will, they will give you a very good your property. They know this property is 100,000. They say 130 or 140 act for three months exclusivity and then the next if the next three to four weeks all they're doing is to lower your expectation to bring the price down 
before they then sell it. So if you look at it, when you go to an estate agent, it takes so long for them to sell the property, maybe 12 weeks. And then from the day you get an offer, it's 12 more weeks to actually sell. So that's like 24 weeks. So it takes about six months. Would that be right, uh, Peter? It takes maybe about six months when you give a property to an estate agent to when you actually sell it. Uh, so it takes quite a long time. So estate agents would take much longer to actually factor in the changes that have taken place because the way the, the, the key differences, um, I do a presentation uh, about the differences between an estate agent and an auctioneer is that when an estate agent walks into your property, they would go as high as possible and then try and manage your expectations down. Whereas auctioneers, they try and go as low as possible, lower than what should be the price. So auctioneers are reacting a lot more to the change. Estate agents, it will probably take a year before you start seeing estate agents actually pricing uh, properties well. Um, maybe in the next two weeks, if lockdown is released and we all can go out, the first estate agents, those that come back, because I'm, I'm suspecting that quite a few of them will not come back from this lockdown, uh, those that come back, they would price as before. And what they would do is that they would look successful to begin with because they will be taking so many listings because auctioneers will not be taking those type of listings. Um, other uh, estate agents might not be taking it. They would look as if they're being success they're, they're successful because they're, they're, they're pricing uh, wrong. But it would take quite a few months for, for them to then realize we've got stock on our windows, but we're not selling. What do we do? Um, any, any comments again? Yeah, I agree with that, Sam. I think, I think all uh, estate agents are, are just behind the curve on, um, on pricing totally especially when in a in a downward market they just sort of think in the past whereas the auctioneers are much more on the ball in my experience while like one of the reasons i like dealing with them yeah absolutely so i think uh that's what they um they tend to uh, to do um, um is there any anyone else uh, um um ellie are you are you here or you are uh, you you walked away I'm just going to get Ellie's uh, uh, view on this, but maybe I think it's probably not on his um, uh, station. So yeah, okay. If if no one has any any comments to uh, to make, we can then maybe uh, gradually um, um, uh, call it off and um, see how we uh, uh, spend the day. Uh, our next uh, upcoming events, uh, apart from the property question time, which I will email everyone next Saturday, we should have um, um, our auction workshop. Um, again, this morning we had to cancel today because, which is why we've gone on longer. Normally, we only have one hour, and then I, I go back to the workshop uh, um, delegates. But because of the um, the, the tenancies that the, the properties that we're doing for the council, I cancelled this morning session because I had to do some viewings um, uh, with the um, um, uh, clients from the from the council. Uh, we are definitely respecting. Social distance, I go out with a mask, I go with my gloves, I open the door and as I go sit back in my car, the family goes in and views by themselves, come out and then they, they, they stand behind my car and I stand at the bonnet. So we are a car length away from each other and we talk over the car. Um, so yes, so uh, we are respecting social distances. So uh, we are very um, uh, conscious of that. So yeah, so so I cancelled it, but hopefully for next Saturday, um, it, it will take place. So I, I will send a link for everyone to uh, uh, to book anyone that wants to come on, um, uh, on that. All right, thanks so much, Sam. I got to go. Um, good to okay. see you again, and thanks, Ranjit, as well. Enjoyed okay. the bar. And thanks for inviting us to be panelists. That's good fun. I like all that. Right, thank you for that. No, it's also uh, it's good to uh, you know it, it's it's jolly not being at home all day. So it's good to have some excitement. You know, you get that done. Okay, thank you. And, uh, good night, have a good weekend. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. goodbye. Bye. Okay. So, um, uh, Ranjit, what's up? What are you on, up to today? Any events that you're going to? Uh, no, that's for the week there. So it starts all over again on Monday. Oh, so you, you got Monday, yeah? Um, yeah. I think I've, I've got, um, for, as we were talking now, and I'm, uh, I'm switching on to, um, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So, so um, 
yeah so, so I'm, I'm looking to um uh, to, to get that down yeah, yeah no i'm looking to actually jump on in a couple of minutes to, to a different zoom session yeah. after a while and then uh, t tomorrow got zoom i don't know what i would have done with that zoom you know this uh um uh, break but your, your wife your wife is happy with you spending so much time on zoom no no i, no, I think this zoom now will all be on it and i think she's already gone on it's a family zoom oh family yeah, tomorrow, yeah. it's a family <laughs> zoom but yeah it's a family one yeah so thank you Sam. oh oh jennifer you're, you're back yeah thank, thank you very much yes i was i was listening in the background thank you oh, okay yeah it's a brilliant session brilliant session yeah, we're trying to get you to talk, but I think at the time you're probably not on your uh, your, your station at the time. So, okay. What, what event are you going to on Monday? Uh, uh, Monday there's Brendan Quinn. Yeah, yeah, of course. Nine o'clock there's Nine Jay, Jay and um Jay. Hey. Facebook Live. Jay yeah. and um um and Piot. Yeah. Nine and to ten, and then ten o'clock uh, yeah Brendan Quinn. Yeah, that, that looks like it's going to be a good event actually. Yeah, and then yeah. there's also uh. Partners in Property Southampton. Oh yes, okay. Now that that is a uh, um, uh, members only. Uh, not privileged to to, to get onto that. Okay. And then um. But you've yeah. been to one of the events, haven't you? Uh, so, sorry. You've been to the event, haven't you? Yes, I, I've been to the one in London. Yes, yes. Oh. And uh, I might, I'll probably do Manchester actually. One of well, once it goes back to the room. Um, oh, I, I'll go to Manchester to to network. Um, yeah, I was actually preparing to go to Manchester before the uh, the lockdown came up. Okay. Yeah. Partners in property, they got virtually two events roughly every day. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So they, they are they are very busy as well, huh? And okay. then we got Baker Street on Wednesday. Okay. Okay. And uh, Partners in Property London on Tuesday. Yeah. And yep. you got an event on uh, Thursday, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, Thursday you got one. Yeah, which is that? Oh, the auction house one, right? No, is it? Oh, is that the old one, Sam's auction workshop? Oh yeah, okay. That that, that the, the auction workshop. Yeah, I think I'll probably push that to Saturday actually. Uh, oh, it's quite that's difficult canceled. to do anything out during the week because uh, it's quite busy with um uh, trying to get this um 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 uh, things going. So yes, so I think I'll probably push that to the to the weekend. The weekend okay yeah, yeah. yeah okay Rajit I will let you um, bye and then yeah. we'll talk again okay all right okay thank you thank you Sam